Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? How we doing today on this fine, fine Friday? Jerome Simons, what's going on? The Eternal Flame, what's going on? Greedy Arts, Demon God, Vex, how we doing? Vex said, yee yee haircut, get out of here. Get out of here. It was time for it to all get cut off. It needed to happen. It was necessary, in my honest opinion. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm Tragon said, man, where's Noah? <laughs> He's gone. I took over. I'm the evil twin. Jerome Simon, so fresh, so clean, clean. A, hey, appreciate that. Tenro 100 made it in time. Yes, you did. Craze said, yo, what's up? No operator. Nice haircut. Thank you very much. Rye guy. Hello. Taipachi Sama. What's going on? Looking fresh. Thanks, demon god. Chichi Nana is here. What's up, Chichi Nana? Thanks, I'm Tragon. Uh, Greedy Art said, no, I've got that Vegeta cut. Get out of here. No, I'm looking drippy. Not going to lie. Hey, I appreciate all you guys. Thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate every single one of you guys. El Senor Slimy's here. Lost in Adagio's here. Get me outs here. What's going on, everybody? No, I, with the character development, he said. Yes. Dawson Mullen, what's going on? Let's go. Mechamaro versus Mahito. Unironically, top five fight. I can't. I, I can't deny it. I can't deny it. Dawson Mullen, Ayo, fresh cut though, my boy. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yo, we got the gifted members from Jerome Simons. Hey, appreciate the five gifted members. Thank you so much. Good congratulations to all the five people that just got a lucky ass membership. Uh, Kashawn Lee, Nutty Buddy, Rewan Abdi, Tyreen Marul, and Ulti Nate. Congratulations on the membership, guys. Enjoy your Sukuna badge. Um, and your ability to now vote on future videos and ask me questions for the member Q&A and you also get access to emojis. Dialectica is here. Dialectica is here. Michael Justice is here. What's going on, everybody? Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you guys. If you guys could, make sure you like the stream. Let's get things started here. I don't want to take too much time. I just want to open up. You know, I, I haven't seen you guys in a while, so it's nice to. Sorry I missed Wednesday. Uh, we were trying to have a decent stream with a couple people, but everything just kind of fell through. Everyone was kind of just not feeling it, so we kind of called off Wednesday, but we'll be back on Wednesdays next week, of course. Uh, JJ said it's time to operate. What's going on? Brad DeAngelis, Brandon Klinsky, what's going on, guys? How we all doing? Appreciate you guys all being here, seriously. Hendrick Dorman is here. Rickard Von Brent, sup man, hope Akari vs. Kashimo ranks high. Yeah, we'll definitely go through a couple different uh, fights. I'm really excited to go through all these different fights here. I didn't realize that the notification would go off for every single person that got a notification. Isn't that kind of crazy? Uh, that got a gifted member. Rickard Von Brent, orange, new new haircut. Nice to see you, no op. I had like a brain fart moment there. Uh, what's going on, Orange? Rashab is here. What's going on, Rashab? Dwayne Carter the third W stream. I agree. So guys, let's honestly let's get right into it. I'm so glad that all you guys are here. I appreciate all you guys being here. So this tier list has pretty much every single uh, fight that's been on that's been in Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, I found a really good one. It's got pretty much mostly all color pages so we can see what's going on. Um, and it has them all titled, um, as opposed to just having manga panels and everything like that, where we kind of have to try and figure out what the, what the fuck fight is what. Um, so this is an awesome panel, um, awesome tier list, and I'm ready for it. Vex said like every single one, like every single one, Vex, like every single one. Brad DeAngelis, so we all agree Miwa vs. Kenjaku is S tier. I will not support this slander in this chat. Already this early? Are we serious? We're already going to put some crazy kind of slander? This Miwa nonsense? This Miwa propaganda? Fuck out of here with this. All right, guys. So that being said, um, we're going to get right into it. I'm really excited to go into it. I want to give a decent explanation for each fight. 
and kind of go into why I'm going to place each fight where I'm going to place each fight. Um, Get Me Out asks, does this include JJK Zero? I'm pretty sure it does. If, I, if I'm not mistaken. I'm looking for like Yuta vs. Ghetto here. Well, it has Gojo vs. Miguel, so I have to imagine it is yes. <clears throat> a booty. The agenda continues. A booty, what's been going on? I appreciate you being here. I haven't seen you in a minute. I appreciate all you guys being here. Seriously, I love every single one of you guys. Make sure if you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. We're going to get this started. So, very first fight is Angel vs. Meg Kuna. Interesting the kind of terminology that this person chose to use for, um, I believe, what is, what has everyone been calling it? Um, Meguna? Everyone's been calling it Meguna. But as far as it goes, so Angel vs. Miguel. <laughs> Miguel. Angel vs. Meg Kuna. That fight let's be honest, was kind of trash, right? Hana kind of screwed that up for everybody. Hana literally ruined that fight. Like, Sukuna in Megami's body summons this demonic-ass-looking Nue, this clearly power-amped, destructive Nue, and Angel is able to stop all of that lightning, stop the attack, and then basically activate what's called Jacob's Ladder, which is her curse technique, which is meant to extinguish all curse technique and also has the interesting ability what it seems to erase um, an incarnated consciousness inside of a vessel. Their goal, or at least Hana's goal, was to use Jacob's Ladder quick enough to where Megami would have been able to survive the process because earlier in the series we find out that if the incarnated vessel is pretty much the incarnated vessel pretty much takes over the consciousness of the original body so that means that they're usually almost always depending on the case <clears throat> completely erased once that incarnated vessel takes complete control grin and barrett thanks so much for being in Appreciate you being here. Vex, was it even a fight? It is a fight. Apparently, it's on the tier list, so we can't... We we shouldn't disrespect Angel like this. Vex, she caught him off guard with her technique and then stopped using her technique because Maguna tricked her and then took a bite out of her. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what I was getting along to, is that Hana really ruined the fight at the end of the day. They pretty much... If she would have kept using the technique, they would have had a chance of actually stopping that technique but they were unable to do that um, because they loved Megami, someone that they didn't even really know. Just a, such a childish crush. So uh, we're gonna rank this fight where it deserves, honestly, an absolute D ranking um, for being an embarrassing moment for, uh, for Angel's character and Hana embarrassing Angel, which was supposed to be one of the only people that has a chance of killing um, Sukuna. So, I feel like it was just honestly rough. It was sad to see. I got to give it a D. Even my boy Mikal, uh, he agrees. Got to agree. Thank you all, best grade members, for being here. Appreciate every single one of you guys. Uh, lost in Adagio, Hana S tier simp. Yeah, Hana is the thirsty one. Angel going to slap Hana. Angel stand, just hold your L. Nah. Absolutely not. Uh, it's got a angel. Really, uh, angel is cool. Hana messed that up. XX Xenon. I assume your name is Xenon. Yo, what's going on? What's going on? Rye guy. Thanks for being here. I agree with the D. Angel screaming at Hana was hilarious. A booty. I agree. How did she mess that up when Angel was literally telling her, "Wait a minute, this isn't done yet. You shouldn't do this yet. Don't approach him yet. The technique's not done." L. Necessary for the story, but God, it was frustrating for sure. Yeah. Next battle is Choso vs. Noya, which I think is personally a really good fight. I really enjoy Choso vs. Noya because we, what we do is we see how two grade one level sorcerers, grade one level characters interact with each other. Noya with his projection sorcery is a really strong threat, and Shosa with blood technique is a really strong threat as well. 
it's actually really cool my favorite one of my favorite parts of the fight and the one thing that sticks with me throughout that entire fight is when projection sorcery is outright blitzing choso and just giving choso such a problem he uses flowing red scale in a way we've never seen before which is amplifying his eyesight so we can actually keep up with projection sorcery and try and dish out his blows before the projection sorcery works and at the end of the day, even though Choso isn't able to override Noya and actually overpower him in hand-to-hand -hand combat or regular fights, he's able to beat him on the contingency plan of his uh, poison blood, which I think is awesome that Choso is, despite losing, he's able to get that last supernova off and actually poison the shit out of Noya. They're both exhausted at this point, and I would say it's a really decent tie aspect of power level they're very even even though choso does end up winning in the long run so i personally i'm gonna have to give it to in my opinion i would say a um it may change going forward in the future we don't know for sure um but as far as i'm concerned it's gonna sit at a for right now as we start ranking more fights um we may drop that down to a b but as of right now, I'm going to leave it at an A. Uh, Dialectica says that was top tier for real. I have to completely agree. Brad DeAngelis, Choso vs. Noya was awesome, 100%. Chichi Nana said just to set a precedent, I'd say C because it's a solid fight. Ranking it low, but okay, I see your point. That's why we'll keep it at A. That's why we'll keep it at A. I'm getting agreements from 10 row 100. Everyone's agreeing. Noya, the feminist king, the misogyny missile, right? <laughs> uh, next fight is Dagon versus the three, which would be Noya, Maki, and uh, Nanami. Uh, Noya, Naobito, Maki, and Nanami um, versus Dagon, which I think is a pretty decent fight as well. I think during the Shibuya incident, it's definitely a really great fight. I definitely don't think, as a couple people are saying in chat, it's an S-tier fight. I definitely don't think it's like a defining moment in the entire series that was just the most amazing thing in the world. I want to save my S tiers for really good fights, but I definitely think that it's an A tier fight. Um, I have to 100% say that the whole beginning portion of Nanami, Naobito, and Maki just not even being able to keep up even before the domain is really interesting and really entertaining that Dagon, despite being a brand new awakened curse spirit or uh, from being a curse womb, was able to keep up with three grade one sorcerers um, or two grade one sorcerers, one semi grade one sorcerer at this point, which is absolutely insane to me. Um, I feel like even after the domain is casted, the D Dagon's domain expansion, the one hit effect of it is insane, right? Just a bunch of hard hitting Shikigami, um, sea creatures that are gonna bite and eat you all at all at once. I think it's super cool. And I also think they all do a great job at combating that domain expansion, even until Megami does show up. So I'm gonna give that an A tier fight. And I can kind of see just from everyone in the chat that I kind of have everyone agreeing. Salvador Albor says solid B. Um, I completely agree with you. I can see where you said that. Once again, these A fights may drop down as we start adding more fights within. But I completely have to agree that right now, this is looking really good. Next, we have the detention center. Which, in my honest opinion, the Detention Center, I would definitely not say it's an amazing fight. Um, but Detention Center is a really critical moment in the story, right? It makes a huge... It, it gives Itadori one reason to level up because he has to face death for the first time. And his face with death is one of the most realistic things I think I remember um, seeing in the series. It was super cool that... Yuji, when facing death against a curse spirit where he has absolutely no chance of fighting, he is acts so realistic. He's like, fuck, I'm going to die. I don't want to die. This sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't real. Nob Nobara shows her heart when she fights the kind of um, 
curses that she faces at the bottom level. She doesn't give up. Even as she's about to die, she's talking shit to the curse that's about to eat her. And Megami, through fighting Sukuna, I don't know if that's a different fight in this um in this section. If it is, it looks like it is, right? Uh, so I don't want to talk too much about Megami versus Sukuna. But even in the detention center, when Megami leaves and trusts Itadori, that starts that friendship between Itadori and Megami, that trust level. Um, so right now, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't put it at a D. I would put it at a pretty high C. Um, I agree with a lot of people where I'm going to put that at a pretty high C level um, fight. Um, I wouldn't put it at B, but I would put it at C. Marcio Amaral, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Chichi Nana said, very spooky vibe. Set the tone for the series. D, though. <laughs> I see. Annie Matrix, nice hair, dude. Your forehead is almost as big as mine. I'll take you as my deputy. Well, I don't know. That's kind of a backhanded compliment. I appreciate that. Your steak, that's a fade, bro. A fade. Good fight showing how dangerous those curses can get. I completely agree, Tenro. Benjamin15, are you ranking based off Shonen in general or comparing it just to other JJK fights? I mean, just my general opinion on JJK fights, probably just to JJK fights. I don't think this is just a overall Shonen um, thing. Marcio Amaro, always here, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate all you guys being here. Seriously, all of you guys are my favorite people in the entire world. You guys are all great. You're all amazing, and I appreciate all of you guys coming here to watch me every Friday, every weekend. It's awesome. I appreciate you guys. If you're not, if you haven't already, please consider liking the stream. It really helps the channel grow. And if you haven't already, definitely consider becoming a best grade member, hitting the join button, or if you don't see a join button, if you're on iPhone, I found out on iOS, they don't let you join with the join button there's a link in the description you can hit the join link and become a best grade member to get the sakuna badge and everything uh, dawson mullen just go ahead and put all the gojo fights s tier i think that might actually end up being a kind of thing that happens chichi nana said shoso versus yuji still my favorite i have to agree that is also one of my favorite fights in the series as well i can't agree a uh, silver loot mostly based on how hype it got us during each fight. Yeah. Callus, hi Noop. Hey, how you doing? I appreciate you being here. Hanza, Hamza, late to the party, but I feel that fight against Dagon is C simply because of the fact that everyone should have been blitzed. Nah, I like the fight. I really enjoyed it as a thing, so I have to leave it at A. Hey, Vex, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Every time you stream, I notice there are more, there's more and more people. You're growing fast, and we love you. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all you guys. You guys are all awesome. Gojo versus the Disaster Curses. I would really have to say, honestly, it, I don't want to put it... Do we have an S? Do we have an S-tier fight already? Do we... I have to think back to this fight. Gojo absolutely blitzing... Carlos, why were you not on Kyo's stream? I had a real life affair actually come up and I wasn't able to make it. Um, I I messaged him the night before. I definitely, it's, I wanted to be there. I felt really bad that I wasn't able to get that, um, get there. Cause that was gonna be a really cool, um, a really cool fight breakdown thing. Uh, I just realized I'm kind of doing a fight bracket thing. Well, it's not really a bracket. I'm just kind of explaining all the fights. I don't know. I was going to do either arcs, but I thought fights might go for a little bit longer. That's the only reason why I did fights. Everyone's saying S in the chat. I have to... I, I might be... I might be bound by the will of ev <laughs> I might be bound by the will of the chat if literally everyone thinks this is an S tier fight. No, her. Kalina, Yono Operator. What's up, dog? What's up, dog? How you being? Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate all you guys. Shichi Nana, so many dynamics in that fight. Yeah, we lose Hanami in that fight. We watch Jogo get obliterated for a second time by Gojo. We watch Gojo start the 0.2 domain. He introduces that to the series. I'll have to agree. Yeah, we're going to have to give that an, an S tier. We're going to have to give it an S tier, in my honest opinion. Um, I completely agree with that. This is just for the 0.2 domain expansion. His ability to literally fight 
all three disaster curses. Well, Choso isn't really a disaster curse, but two disaster curses at once with domain amplification on him, diluting his curse technique. He's able to hand-to-hand -hand destroy both of those cursed spirits. And then when he fights Mahito, He's able to completely access his 0.2 domain, stun all the cursed spirits, and then eliminate 500 transfigured humans all at once. The only reason he didn't end the series at that point was because Kenjaku stopped him and got him with Prison Realm. Turned Hanami to dust, Shichidana said. Exactly. Turned not Hanami to absolute dust. So you know what? I completely agree with you guys. It definitely is an S tier fight. I have to completely agree with you. Definitely an S tier fight. We have Gojo versus Jogo after this, which is another awesome fight. I don't know if I would put Gojo versus Jogo at S tier again, because I would definitely not classify it on the same level as what we literally just talked about um, in Gojo versus Disaster Curses, but it's definitely a potential A. B ranking. It's a one-sided bullying, as Silver Loot said, for sure. Orange said, not peak Jogo. Brad DeAngelis, the look on Gojo's face as he obliterated Hana. I was terrifying and thrilling at the same time. I think you mean Hanami. Yeah, definitely a good moment. Okay, I can agree A for the next two only. I feel like it's a B tier. That wasn't a fight. That was a teaching moment. A tier, it's the first time we see domain expansions and Gojo's expansion. That is a good point. It is the first time that we see domain expansions. It is a critical moment and really just a, a, a memorable moment. I, hmm. But can I say I enjoy it as much as a real genuine sorcerer fight like Choso and Noya or Dagon versus the three? Like, would I go back and read it? No. I think this might be a great B. I'm dragging ass. Where's my boy fake weeb? I don't know. He might be doing his own thing. I don't know. He's having a stream later tonight to uh, hope for a uh, Jujutsu Kaisen trailer and live react to it. So you can go check him out later tonight. He's actually having his own stream. Um, uh, a tier, I thought it was funny. Get me out says B is fair. Mikal says top of B probably. Well, well we technically see Sukuna's domain first. Raid Zero says... Oh, true, yeah. King cursed uh, King KT Sakuna uses domain expansion before this. I'm gonna go with B. I think just based off of everything that we see, right? Where we finally get uh Gojo's limitless introduced, and we see Gojo just outright obliterate Jogo. Uh Kanjaku compares Jogo to something of what eight to nine fingers of power, and Sakuna of, of uh, eight to nine powers of Sakuna fingers. Um, so like, it's utterly insane that Gojo just makes that look utterly fucking fodder. And at least in his eyes, right? He is so much more powerful than Jogo. And like, he even describes it. There's, th you can't touch me because of the infinity between you and I. What an iconic moment. So, like, I have to say that um, it's it's definitely a beef tier fight. Um, I don't think it's A because I wouldn't say I would reread it like a Choso or Dagon, but I definitely say it's a it's a good fight. It's fun to see. Gojo versus Miguel. Gojo versus Miguel is kind of a similar explanation, I would say. Um, because in my honest opinion, while Gojo vs. Miguel is a fun beatdown, it's a one-sided bullying, and honestly, it's really not that great. Um, uh, Booty said that has a good point. That was all over TikTok when it came out. It was a crazy racially motivated, uh, beatdown. It was just... He literally, like, when I saw that in the theaters, that was absolutely insane. I can't deny it. Um, but I'd have to say that... Um, it's kind of a similar level to the detention center where it's a really cool um, a really cool moment and a really interesting fight to see. Um, I wouldn't go back to watch it, nor do I think it's as cool as something like Gojo vs. Jogo, where we do see things like Domain Clash. We do get the Limitless better explained and things like that. So I think it's a great beatdown, but not really a great fight. So while I would definitely put it above an, uh, of above an embar embarrassment like fucking Angel vs. Uh, 
Maguna, I definitely don't think it's uh, it's better. It's on the same level as something like Gojo versus Jogo. Definitely C tier moment. Um, guys, if you haven't already, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. Make sure you like the stream if you haven't already. That really helps the channel grow. It really helps the stream. Like the stream if you haven't. Damn, we've got all these Gojo fights one after the other. I didn't even realize that. That literally just Gojo is Gojo, Gojo, Gojo. That's crazy to me. Um, next is Gojo versus Sukuna on the, that we get on uh, the very first meeting of, or the very first time that Sukuna takes over Yuji's body. That is a very cool moment because um, it shows that Gojo, again, is able to easily mollywop Sukuna when he's not at his full power, um, which just from what we've seen um, throughout the series with 15 finger Sukuna, it's kind of just uh, insane. If you really think about it, um, the kind of level, pa the kind of power gap that 15 finger Sukuna creates to all the other sorcerers and characters in the series. Where does Gojo scale to that? It's a really interesting concept. I love that this question um, is kind of hard to answer. And I love that this question is raised just by talking about the very first fight that we see in the series, which is between the two strongest characters in the series. I have to give it a C because it's really quick. It's not long enough. I'd love it if it was longer. Um, I wouldn't put it on the same level as Gojo versus Jogo. I'd still put it as a cool moment in the series, but I don't think it's a B tier fight. I got a couple people saying B in the chat. I see a couple people saying B in the chat. Uh, Tenro 100, it's good for showing why Gojo is the strongest in the manga. Raid Zero makes a good point, and this is why I'm putting it in C, is because it's literally a 10 second fight. That's the only reason I would say that, is because actually, if it was longer, I'd give it a B, but it's so quick, it happens so fast, everything goes by so quick, and then the 10 seconds are up. So it's gonna have to stay in C tier. Very close to B, that's why I put it above Detention Center. C plus but it doesn't get into B tier with Gojo versus Jogo, for sure. It does not, unfortunately. Next, we have Gojo versus Toji, which is a iconic, classic, amazing fight. Um, especially when you consider is Gojo versus Toji beforehand in here? Because if it is, that might change my opinion. It's not. No. So I would consider this considering both the first fight with Gojo and Toji and also the second fight with Gojo and Toji. Which the first fight I think is really cool because we see just how strong and just how fast someone like Toji can be. Someone that has that heavenly restriction to the fullest with no cursed energy is just able to completely just speed blitz and perception blitz someone like Gojo who even has the six eyes. He's able to use a swarm of curse, um, a curse spirits, flies, and everything like that. Thank you so much. He's able to use a swarm of curse spirits, flies, and everything like that to really just confuse Gojo and take full advantage of that. And I also love Toji's whole Batman aesthetic where he literally uses so much preparation, traps, and everything to kind of fool someone that he knows he wouldn't be able to take head on. And then in the second half of the fight where Gojo's awakened, Gojo just outright does the same thing to Toji on the other end where Gojo blitzes the fuck out of Toji. Gojo's floating around, just literally considered to be called the honored one. And he literally, not one, just awakens his red technique that we see earlier in the arc he's not able to actually use, which is just a completion of his character development, which I love. Red knocks and sends Toji completely back, but then Gojo unlocks purple through developing red and blue together, which just completely dis destroys Toji. That whole entire arc and just culmination of the hidden inventory arc really is one of my favorite fights in the entire world. And you're right, I'm gonna have to give it an S. Everyone said it, everyone already called it. 
it's just such it's one of the best fights in the series we have to agree on this right i have to admit that it's one of the best fights in the series i can go back and read that fight all day any day and it is still just as exciting maybe not as exciting but still just as cool as it was when i first read it that upside down page of gojo unleashing red is one of the coolest panels in the world orange the people are happy that's what matters right that's what matters the people are happy uh, your stake the fight that made so many manga music videos is easily s tier completely correct your stake i completely agree dawson mullen said s tenro 100 said s oh we got everybody saying s tier everybody saying s tier silver loot a plus to be contrarian this is why we're all gay for Toji like Noya. I won't lie, man. Toji's the man. Toji is the greatest. I'm Tragon. Best fight of season two. So cool thing. You guys are all here. You get a little spoiler. Of course, I love my stream gang. I love telling you guys spoilers because no one else gets to hear it. But you guys, um, I'm going to be releasing a compilation tomorrow to, to go with the um, season two release if we get a trailer very cool um but basically it'll be a compilation of what i consider the three most f best fights or most three most important fights in jujutsu kaisen season two um it will be a toji fight gojo fight and sakuna fight all put together in one video um some of the fights that you've probably already seen so if you've already seen it i i understand don't worry about it but this is mostly for people that haven't seen me and are anime only that don't mind spoilers and want to see what the most important fights are in preparation for season two or just new people that haven't found my channel and want to watch those videos um but because they're old they don't really populate as much so i'm going to put them all in a big compilation so yes next fight um actually before we move on, I appreciate all you guys. Like the stream, please, if you haven't already. Love you guys. Like the stream. Um, next fight is Hakari versus Charles. Hakari versus Charles, guys. Well, honestly, while it's a fun fight, the reason why it's fun, we have to admit, is because of Hakari. Hakari is what makes this fight. The full buildup of Hakari as a character for over like 170 chapters, right? Is just... It really is a solidifying moment to see him go up against someone that is a little weaker than him so he can show off, right? We did get that small scuffle with him and Yuji, but that was not nearly enough. We needed to see him go up against someone that, frankly, had a really... After enough gassing and after enough evolving and training, Charles could be a pretty formidable foe, right? With uh, Future Sight. But with a, an opponent that's able to see two seconds into the future, Hikari was able to literally out-blitz them, out-speed them, and, and literally react faster than they could, even though they could see two seconds into the future. And then we see Akari's domain, which is just essential to his character as a whole. I mean, it definitely is a great fight. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy that fight. Charles' technique is really cool. Hikari being revealed and showing off more of his ability is really cool. Um, I would have to say I'll put it at B tier. I don't know if anyone would be mad at me, but I'd say it's probably just as good of a fight as Gojo versus Jogo. Putting a, a top tier sorcerer like Hikari up against someone weaker to really allow them to show off all of their skills, their stats, everything like that. And I definitely enjoy it, or would it say it's a much more fun fight than something like the Detention Center or Gojo versus Miguel. Um, a lot of people are saying C, uh, C+. Plus. I'm going to leave it at low B. We're going to see what fills B tier, right? We're going to see what fills B tier a little bit more before we jump to conclusions. Um, because if more B tier fights start adding into that tier and they're better than that fight, I will once again drop things. But right now, it's B. But I think we can all agree without any reasonable doubt or even need for explanation even though i'll give one that hakari versus kashimo is literally one of the greatest fights in jujutsu kaisen 
without a doubt one of the best fights ever created it's going right now at the top of s tier it may even end up getting its own fucking tier with other fights of course but it is one of the best fights in the entire series some are saying their number one fight and i have a hard time displacing yuji vs mahito in my heart but it's top tier it is one of the best fights in the Cullen game, probably the best fight in the Cullen game. It's only contender would be Yuji, um, Yuji. It's only contender would be Yuta in Sendai Colony. Even though not saying Yuji versus Higuruma or Megami versus Reggie are bad, which you guys will see because obviously I'll be ranking them later in this tier list, but it's actually utterly insane how great that fight is. Everything about it, Hikari's Domain Expansion, Restless Gambler, or Idle Death Gamble is just so great. Um, it is quite honestly one of the coolest Domain Expansion curse techniques ever. Kashimo, who is just him of all utter, just, just him. With even without a curse technique, he's able to keep up with someone with infinite cursed energy. How crazy is that? Just the overall entire hand-to-hands being thrown, the outright Hikari surviving multiple lightning strikes and near-death situations and just landing jackpots every single time he can. The fact that Hikari moves his domain expansion like a JoJo reference and puts Kashimo over the water so he can expel all of his lightning cursed energy. It's insane. Utterly insane. It's going to be an S tier for me, dog. It's always going to be an S tier for me, dog. Um, Without a doubt, one of the top contenders of the verse. And once again, it may end up getting its own ranking tier list at the top. Vex, their personalities match so well and that fight goes so well back to back. I completely agree. Beetle says the clutch Akari made was insane. Orange, my man, Akari unleashed the hee-hee and slammed Kashimo. That's one of the greatest moments when he does the Michael Jackson crotch grab and then fucking reams right into Kashimo. So cool. Orange says lacks emotion but had everything else. It's just straight hands. It's just utter, just fucking brutal action, and that's why I love it. Their personalities, as Vex said, they clash so well. They're just both about it, about it. There's just nothing else... It's just they both want the smoke. Chichi Nana, this list is getting me hyped for season two. I'm so excited for season two. That um that key visual we got looks so good. Gojo and Ghetto look so good. Toji hiding in the background. Ah, uh, it's so great. Uh, Dawson Mellon said the emotion was hype. Straight hands. That was it. That was it. Slain09, yo, I just came in. Nice cut. Hey, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all you guys that are here in stream right now. Thank you guys all for being with me. I sincerely appreciate all you guys being fans. Please, if you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. It really helps uh, the channel grow and it really helps the stream. And I really appreciate you guys. If you haven't already, please consider becoming a member as well. It really supports the channel and helps the channel get better content out faster and better content as well because i can afford better editors please consider pressing the join button you get a cool little sakuna badge emojis everything like that a uh, champion link opinion on yuta's free-for-all oh we'll get to that that's also one of my favorite fights in the entire series we're definitely going to be able to go ahead and get into that uh when that comes up i think it's actually probably going to be coming up soon but don't think I, I this this tier list will contend and will contain this tier list will contain all of the fights that have happened in Jujutsu Kaisen as a whole. So trust me, we're going to get to Yuta and Sendai. Your stake said if we get that trailer tomorrow, that might be the best gift of the year. I would love a trailer. If we get a trailer, you can best believe you'll be getting a reaction because that would be awesome. Jaden 8D, a hype, hype tier list day. What's going on, man? Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you guys being here. Seriously. Uh, Dr. Danger Kashimo released chlorine gas to poison Akari. That is one of the craziest things that happened, right? Kashimo was like, wait, hold up a minute. Let me just fucking create chlorine gas real quick. What a scientist. You know what I mean? I'm glad that Giga gave us that, um, in that gave us that, um, 
explanation um, that sorcerers um, or reincarnated sorcerers get the um, memories and the information of the modern era from all of their um, from from their vessels. Which is why Kashimo would know about chlorine gas and everything like that, which is still crazy to me, but just insane. Uh, One Punch Man, what's good, my boy? Which fight are you most hyped to be animated? I assume in season two. I can't wait to see Yuji versus Mahito, man. That's quite honestly my favorite fight. Spoilers. I love that fight. Hey, guys, real quick. I left my water downstairs. I'm a big, big idiot. Um, I'm going to go grab that. I'm going to play an ad while I'm gone. None of you guys leave. You're all out. You're all supposed to stay here. You can't leave. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But guys, I seriously appreciate every single one of you guys. I'll be right back. I just need to grab water because I'm going to be talking a lot. I've been talking for 42 minutes and my throat is dry as fuck. All right. I'll see you guys in a second. Don't leave. I'm inserting an ad. I love you. All right, partners. Keep on rolling, baby. Oh, I'm Tragon. You're leaving? Hey, man, thanks so much for showing up. I appreciate you being here. I'm glad I made it right when you were saying goodbye. Champion Link said, bruh, this ad is kind of fire. I don't, I don't even want to know. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what ad <laughs> showed up. I'm kind of scared. Miles Cell said, "Add for what? I don't know. I just pressed insert and add. That's what YouTube lets me do." Champion Link, the binding vow at the end was hype as fuck. True, true. Vex, you didn't play an ad. Some people get them, some people don't. I don't know what to tell you. That's just YouTube. Um, Craze, uh, no, yo, no op. Wasn't it kind of dope when we found out that Hikari is a nerd? Yeah, he was like, oh, do you like manga? Here's a JoJo reference right here. That was super cool. Boku no Color is here. What's up, guys? Boku no Color is the awesome artist and uh, person that colors all of my thumbnails, everything like that. He does awesome work. If you haven't already, make sure you go check out his Twitter. Um, I'm actually going to post that in the chat right now. Um, but he makes awesome stuff. Um, so, like, if you like my fight analysis thumbnails, then that's all him. Next chapter predictions. I think uh, I saw a lot of people say that uh, Sakuna might actually not be summoning Maharaga. Might actually just be um, summoning the wheel. Which if he's partially summoning just the wheel, I think that's super crazy. I just want, I just hope this Sakuna versus Yorozu fight lasts a couple chapters so I can make a video on it. <laughs> that's all I really care about, you know. 
Yes, everyone's given Bocono Color praise in the chat. It's so tr super true. Everyone go follow him on Twitter if you don't already. Dude does awesome work, colors, panels, everything like that. He does awesome work. If you like my fight analysis, thumbnails, everything like that, go check him out. He does awesome work, uh, coloring manga panels, everything like that. Hey, David, uh, David Gatto, thank you so much for the $5. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me, brother. Uh, bro, love the videos. You have a great voice for narration. Please keep up the great work. I will. Thank you so much. That donation really, like I said, any donation I get means a lot to me, guys. You guys are all my favorite part of the day. I love coming in on Friday, even on Wednesday. I love talking with all you guys. You guys are all awesome. Chichi Nana said, just followed Bocano Color. That's the shit. Alright guys, let's move on with this, um, let's move on with the fight tier list. Let's make sure we all get back to where we were. Can't lose sight. Make sure you like the stream if you haven't already. Next fight is going to be... Oh, Vex said, God, I love the community of your channel. They are so welcoming and nice people. I hope so. That's all I want is I want to have a nice community with nice people. Um, that's all I care about. I don't want any hate. I just want good vibes only. That's all I care about is good vibes. And uh, good vibes, watching people get the shit kicked out of them, by the way, because right next is Eno vs. Toji, which I think it's kind of bold and generous that they would even consider this a fight. In my honest opinion, this isn't even a fight, right? This is literally Toji just punching the shit out of Eno and throwing him off a fucking skyscraper or throwing off a very tall building. So... Even though while I love seeing Toji, uh, while I love seeing Toji beat the shit out of people, I think it's just going to have to be a D tier. <laughs> Next up is Kashimo vs. Panda, which once again is a very quick beatdown. Which someone recommended, Orange recommended probably making a tier list for just bullying. Like, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, that might be a great case because there's a lot of cases of fights that are going to be on this list that are literally just like, why did you even try? Why did you even attempt to fight? Jerome Simon said minus D. A buddy said Eno Shiesty is amazing. <laughs> Jerome Simon minus D minus D. That's how much you hate Panda. Chichi Nana said Panda held his own. We saw Triceratops, and that was the big fight. I mean, yeah, Triceratops was the shining moment of the entire fight, and we didn't even get to see that because it got completely blown up. So that's why I would have to say, uh, people, uh, Dawson Mullen said B tier off comedy alone. Champion Link S tier. Panda was holding back, had to keep Hakari's ego. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that cope. I like that. That's funny. No, that is a good joke, though. I, I think that's funny. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to put this in D tier as well, right next to Eno versus Toji. For sure. For sure. Uh, how far apart is Yuta's fight and Sukuna appearing? Like, is Yuta still in the colony? I really don't know. I have no idea where Yuta is, if he left Sendai Colony or what. I mean, they have free entry and exit now, so who knows? Misery is here. Misery is here. No op, you looking clean with the cut. Last time I saw, put that halftime entertainment fight into D, by the way. Completely true, completely true halftime entertainment fight. I'd have to say that's what that is. Misery is another awesome person that I work with. They make great work doing editing. Uh, they made the Sakuna vs. Gun Devil video as cool as it possibly could be. They really brought that video to life. So if you enjoy editing, uh, Misery is the person to hit up. Uh, I don't know, Misery, if you have any socials or anything. Um, I just, you love, you, you do good work, man. I love you. I appreciate you. Only big plus of the fight was we finally saw the last form of Panda and it got murked immediately. Yeah, it did kind of get murked immediately, right? Which is why I have to put it at C. I don't care that we got that reveal. That wasn't enough for me to give it a, a, a good fight. Up next is going to be Kenjaku vs. Choso. Kenjaku vs. Choso, everybody. 
What do we think about Kenjaku first Choso? I like that fight. I thought that was actually a pretty interesting fight to see Choso. Choso just wants nothing more than to kill the person that has put him through so much trauma. Fucking um, Choso, the whole reason he's even alive again is because of Kenjaku. Kenjaku forced his mother to birth them and then brought them back again. It's just terrible. He has, Choso has such a grudge. And the fact that that grudge and his brother's death was able to propel him into a power-up where he was able to somewhat decently fight Kenjaku enough where Kenjaku had to use a curse technique that wasn't curse spirit manipulation. I think Choso really fought his own. I think Choso really did a great job fighting everything um, that Kenjaku had to throw at him. Um, I think Choso's power up where Choso was able to use or at least copy the abilities that his uh, brothers had. I feel like that was a really great way to give Choso an awesome power up that extends beyond blood manipulation. Um, everyone's giving it an A. Would I say it's an A? That is a really tough thing to say. And the reason I have to say it's tough is because while I think it's a great fight, I think Kenjaku versus Yuki and Choso and Kenjaku versus Yuki is an A tier fight. And I wouldn't put Choso and Ken versus Kenjaku on that same level. So in my honest opinion, hmm, I would have to say it's top tier B. It's a great way to show Choso leveling up. It's great for Choso's character development. But I think that portion of the fight is probably the weakest. Whereas Yuki versus, uh, Cho Yuki versus Kenjaku is where the fight really steps up and becomes A tier. Which as I'm going to explain later. So I'm going to have to say that I put it at the top of B for now. We may change it later. Um, I completely enjoy everything that that fight has to offer. Um, but I don't think it's as enjoyable as Dagon versus uh, the three or Choso versus Naoya by any means. Uh, next, we have Kenjaku versus High School, which I believe is what everyone's talking about. Kenjaku versus Miwa, you nonsense people with your Miwa agendas, your MKKs. This is the final climax fight in, um, in Shibuya Incident. Um, where Kenjaku basically fought everybody. Um, now, I really don't know, as Orange is spamming in the chat, I really don't know if I would put Kenjaku versus the high school at an S tier. Um, I do think, however, that the fact that Kenjaku was able to go up against everyone all at once is kind of a great feat. Um, and I think the climax to the Shibuya incident is an amazing, like going right from Yuji versus Mahito into Kenjaku versus everybody is a great climax for the Shibuya incident. So I really completely feel like that is a great fight. Would I put it in A? Nah. I would definitely put it around B tier, right where I said Kenjaku versus Choso is, where it's a definitely an interesting moment in the series. Um, and I think it definitely keeps the momentum of Yuji versus Mahito f going strong into the climax of Shibuya Incident. Um, that's the only reason why I would even bother putting it in the tier that it's at. Anything that fodderizes Miwa is S tier. Orange, get out of here with that nonsense propaganda. I'm tired of it. <laughs> the Miwa nonsense needs to end orange orame proved why sakuna lets them stand with him and we get miwa get trashed epic completely agree miwa just had mercy with kenjaku he said hendrick dorman so this is basically the fight where Kenjaku literally takes on all of the students he takes on mai with a sniper rifle miwa throws out some wind scythes uh, like Tamari from Naruto. It's um, it's a great, like I said, a great climax to the Shibuya incident. Um, but definitely sitting in B tier for right now. Yuki came in like Goku too. Shishi Nana said, great. <laughs> Orange says, I've made it my mission to bully Miwa. Good. 
We need to stop the Miwa agenda now. Um, so moving on would be Kenjaku versus Yuki and Shoso. And right after that, we have Kenjaku versus Yuki, which I would definitely feel like are definitely A tier fights, both of them. Because when Yuki steps in for Choso, that's an awesome moment where we finally get to see Bombaye or Wrath of the Stars. We finally get to see Yuki's curse technique and Yuki fight for the first time in forever. Yuki's been hyped up for a very long time as being one of the four special grade sorcerers. So seeing her curse technique be mass manipulation, which is very primarily strong and is able to literally rip the hands rip the arms off of kenjaku's elbows with one fucking blue lock goal um with one blue lock goal of garuda to the fucking person's arms i think that's crazy it literally also eradicates the curse spirit that was able to tank kenjak uh tank the white house's special security forces which, I mean, we already know special grade sorcerers have special grade sorcerers and special grades in general can handle guns no problem. Unless they're the gun devil, by the way. But that black hole, as Shichi Nana mentioned, was a great way to end the fight. The fact that Kenjaku literally survived is insane. Uh, Abudi said Yuki the egoist. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. But also, the fact that Yuki gets uh, taken out by Kenjaku's domain expansion, right? Gets literally obliterated, crinkled up, and like folded like she's a straw. Like, uh, she's like, she's like the case of a straw. Like, it actually is kind of insane. She doesn't heal herself. She literally gets right back up and fights Kenjaku so he can't um, cool down from his domain expansion. She wants to literally take him out in that moment when he can't use a curse technique. So she doesn't heal herself with reverse curse technique because she refuses to give up this time, which I think is awesome. And then Choso just comes out of nowhere, surprises the fuck out of Kenjaku and jumps out and tries to piercing blood him. They almost take off his skull, but Kenjaku is just a mastermind. That speech that Kenjaku gives, by the way, of him being alive for thousands of years and seeing wars and fights and just gaining so much experience you know what talking about it should it be an s tier fight is it just as good as gojo versus toji nah there's no way it's parent killing time as uh, orange said really it's on the same level as Gojo vs. Toji. Would we say, okay, so would we say, would we say Kenjaku vs. Choso B, Yuki vs. Kenjaku A, Yuki and Choso vs. Kenjaku is S? Is that what we, is that what we would say? Because it does get pretty hype towards that end portion there. It's pretty much just a, ra a rising rat, a, a, a rising mountain. That entire fight really is. All three S. You're out of your mind. All three aren't S. I, I give it the rising mountain. I'll give it the rising mountain effect. All right, we got it. Kenjaku versus Yuki and Choso is S. Kenjaku versus Yuki is A. And then Cho uh, Kenjaku versus Choso is B. I think that's very fair. Kenjaku was in those World War II trenches. So true, so true. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. Next fight is one of my personally favorite fights in the entire series. I have to admit it. Uh, Chuyaism, sorry. Late to the stream, so I gotta catch up a bit, but I'm at the Miwa vs. Kenjaku fight, and I have to say the MKK agenda lives on. Anyone who disagrees is simply wrong. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you being here. I love that. I ho You're going to get to this portion like 20 minutes later and you're going to be like, holy shit. <laughs> That's so funny. I hope this really, uh, I hope this uh, is just like really cool, like a future site Pokemon move. <laughs> Stop. That was my little bird, um, my little nerd moment. <laughs> Never ask Kenjaku what he was doing between 1937 and 1945. That's a good point. I don't want to know. 
He definitely was in the wrong place at the wrong time there. I wouldn't doubt it. But anyway, this next fight is one of my favorite fights in the entire series. I personally really enjoy it. I think it's one of the best fights in the entire series. I can't say it enough. I've said it three times already. That's got to be Mahito versus Mechamaru. Diavolo is here, guys. Everybody give Diavolo a nice little shout out. Thanks so much for being here, Diavolo. You the man. Stop, bro. Miwa killing the verse. Don't stop the anti-Miwa agenda, Diavolo. The ag agenda. Agenda. The anti-Miwa agenda needs to continue. Don't enforce this pro-Miwa agenda nonsense. Ronin has, has, has tainted the well. He's poisoned the well beyond belief, and I'm stopping everything. Bill says, love you, big man. Always lurking. Love you too, boss man. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you showing up. Love you always. I love every single one of you guys being here. Seriously, I appreciate every single one of you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. And you also like the stream for Mahito vs. Mechamaru. Because I don't know about any of you guys. I'm putting this at S. Is anyone going to fight me on this? Is anyone going to fight me on this? Koi, Maito vs. Mechamaro enjoyers are chads. I completely agree. Vex says A tier fight. I disagree. S tier fight. One of the best fights in the entire series. Hamza said, bruh. Argue me why it's not perfect. I'm going to assume your name is Tiberius with the six in there because it's meant to uh, substitute the B. Tiberius, thank you so much for the $5 donation. Appreciate you, brother. That means a lot to me. Random, but imagine Kenny is Rika's dad too. LOL, his little cursed Brady Bunch. That would be some pretty deep lore. I would not be opposed to that. It's interesting that both of Yuta's parents died by mysterious circumstances, right? Her mom died in a car crash and then her dad got lost out in the woods somewhere or her dad took her out to the woods and then Rika came out, but her dad didn't. It was definitely some pretty crazy shit. Nerva gets it. Nerva gets it. In this community, we do two things. We hate on Miwa and we support Momo. That's the truth. Brad DeAngelis, I agree with no op here. Anime hype tax coming in hard here. All my stocks are into this fight. All my fucking stocks are into this fight. Oh my god, this fight's gonna go so hard. This Mahito vs. Mechamaro is literally gonna go crazy. I hope it gets an entire episode to itself. If you have not seen my video on the episode guide to Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, what Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 will look like, it's literally gonna be one of the crazy... Uh, it's gonna be a whole episode, Episode 7, guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. Dawson Mullen says, yes, sir. Mahito went crazy. This fight, his use of his surroundings was awesome. So just to give you an idea, Mechamaru being the traitor makes sense to give up everything to become and gain his a regular human body back. That's great. Selfish. And he gets his just desserts almost immediately for it, right? How poetic is that? Mahito vows to fight him. They start off small, Ultimate Mechamaro versus Mahito, and, ulti and Mahito is able to literally fight this giant mech. Super crazy, right? And Mechamaro has just been hoarding all of this cursed energy throughout his entire life, storing it for this one moment to make everything wrong that he's done right. He wants to escape this moment, take his human body, and fucking escape to let Gojo know about Shibuya Incident. But Kenjaku's veil doesn't let him, so he has to stay and fight Mahito. And he thinks using the simple domain canister, he can get that one up on Mahito. But Mahito is just able to evolve in that one moment, catch him in his domain expansion, and just... Crazy. Absolutely insane. The fact that I, I feel like it's so poetic that Mechamaro tries to abuse the system here, abuse a binding vow and win. And then Mahito at the very last moment just turns into a fucking horror fucking character, a horror fucking movie monster and destroys it. Destroys everything. Hatred asks, can I make the tier list any bigger? 
I probably could now. Yeah, hold on. Let, I, let me see. Here, I made it a little bit bigger for you, boss man. We make the Sakuna a little bit bigger so you still see him looking over everything. I hope that's a little bit better. I'll be able to make it bigger over time as I put more and more out of the list into the tier list. Um, but overall, like, I think I've made my case pretty well, right? Like, this fight is very poetic. I think it stands for everything. And Jutsu Kaisen pretty much prides and, and pushes itself on. It's one of the greatest fights in the series. And I love the fact that Mechamaru thinking he can try and abuse the system dies at the very end to Maito's disgusting, just literally fucking, what's the word I'm looking for? Fucking esoteric, no. Mysticism, no. Fucking, ah, uh, I can't think of the word. Cthulhu, fucking, what's that word? Um, I can't think of it, but he looks crazy. Let's just leave it at that. We'll move on. Yeah, Orange, I agree. We do need to see a binding vow get broken so we can see why everyone was so scary. Lovecraftian, thank you. There's also another word for that. Um, cosmic horror, supernatural, Lovecraftian, Lovecraftian might be the, the, the word that I'm thinking of. Crazy. Um, I love and I miss Mahito. I can't wait for Mahito to come back. That's why Mahito is the thumbnail for this because I miss Mahito so much. Eldritch, thank you. That one person 90, that's the word that I was looking for. An Eldritch horror. That's the exact fucking shit I was thinking of. You guys are my saviors. I love all of you. A booty, black guy, 444. What an interesting name. I love all of you guys. Next fight, speaking of Mahito, is going to be Mahito versus Nanami, which is another great fight, especially um, early being an anime only when I first saw this fight. It really is a great and interesting scuffle, right? Where Nanami is able to fully show his critical ratio technique, which is awesome. It's a really innovative technique for the early days of Jujutsu Kaisen. And Maito, just being a villain that evolves and grows over time, I feel like is an amazing um, way to introduce his character. Um, I would definitely say, um, I definitely think it sits in B tier, in my honest opinion, as everyone's kind of saying um, in the chat. High B to A, B tier. Maito was just as hype as Chodo when it came to fights. Love me some characters that love to fight. Completely agree. I love Maito's just willingness to grow, learn, and just fight anyone who's willing to throw hands at him because he knows his technique is OP. Zuxi win chapter 218. Next week, brother, we're in a break week. That's why we're doing a tier list. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, I completely agree with everyone. I'd say it's a nice little B tier scuffle. Um, maybe, is it C tier? Is it C tier? I'm going to put it at top of C tier, actually. I'm going to put it at top of C tier. Two guys, them says it's too long a wait. Completely agree. I hate break weeks. They suck. Orange says not nah, B. The setup makes it a B. Everyone's saying B tier. You know what it is? You know what it is? You know what it is? Hakari versus Charles is too high. And Kenjaku versus Choso is too low. I think Kenjaku versus Choso sits today. I was wrong. Definitely I was wrong. Let me change the tier list now. See, this is why we have to change the tier list as we get more information. Kenjaku vs. Choso is definitely an A-tier fight. I don't think it sits on Gojo vs. Jogo or Mahito vs. Nanami or Kenjaku vs. Um, high School. I don't see that at all. And I definitely don't see Hikari vs. Charles being on the same level as these fights. So we had to make a quick adjustment, but I say this all makes more sense. What fight is that? 
I went to the bathroom and can't read the next fight. We haven't moved on yet. Koi says, I wasn't too big of a fan when it came to Okari versus Charles. Um, so Maido versus Nanami is um, the fight we were talking about. Show my man uh, Choso some respect. Yeah, you're right. I was wrong completely. Next fight is Maki and Kamo versus Curse Noya. Maki and Kamo versus Curse Noya. What do we all think about that? That fight was... It was okay. <laughs> the first half of that fight when Noya's a giant worm um, is kind of okay. And then the second half of the fight when he becomes the misogyny missile... Um, when he starts awakening projection sorcery and starts using his tendrils um, and he does it to take out Maki, even though Maki and Kamo set up the defense and everything like that, it does show that Naito, Naito, Nayo, Naoya growing into a vengeful spirit really did ascend him to a level that was greater than what Maki once was, which is really interesting because Maki, we originally thought after perfect preparation was just an unstoppable force, right? She had become a monster, but this fight humbles her. Noya's vengeful spirit form humbles the fuck out of her in the first half. So Johnny, so what's up? Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for enjoying the haircut. I, I you know, I like that. Thank you. Uh, Vex, this is just the first half because the second half is coming up right after this. Yeah, so... Kamo's last stand, and it is really cool before Ma uh, Mayo and Dido show up. Um, Kamo does have that nice little character moment. So what I'm willing to say is I'm willing to put the first half of that fight... That red weep, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate you. S says Maki versus Noya is at least C in my opinion. Tressa Mary Joseph, weakest character is no operator. Well, that's kind of mean. Why would you say that? I feel like this is top of C for now. Maybe I'll grow it. Maybe I'll, I'll raise it later, but... I really didn't. I really don't think that fight is anything to write home about. Um, because Maki, Dido, and Mayo, I would even say, is like a B tier fight. Unless anyone wants to fight me on that, right? Like, I don't even think. I would not put Maki, Dido, Mayo versus Noya in the same level of fight as Choso versus Noya, Dagon, Kenjaku versus Yuki. I would say that's probably the weakest fight of the Culling game, in my honest opinion, right? Um, I definitely don't see that being that great. Or anything in A tier. The only hype thing about that whole mini arc fight was Maki reaching Toji level. Completely agree, Jaden. I think that really is um, the best part of that fight is Maki growing and evolving. I feel like this was just something that Gege had to really get through. And he didn't really do as well as he could have. Um, Koi agrees. Definitely the weakest fight in the culling game. I have to say... Uh, would have been better if Kamo got reverse curse technique to resupply with blood. Interesting. Kamo's stand, last stand is cool, but it's not that cool. Let's be honest. Noya's domain was really great. Noya's domain was awesome, and it is, it is a really great domain expansion. I love the womb um, symbi symbolism into his domain expansion, and the fact that if you move an inch, you basically die in his domain. It really is an amazing domain expansion. Vengeful Spirit Noya is an awesome character. Don't get me wrong, I like that. I want to do a video on him later fighting Mahito and see how he does. Um, but that being said, I definitely don't see it being an A-tier fight. I would not re -re I wouldn't want to reread that fight on my own time just for fun. To be honest with you, I just wouldn't. That's me being honest. The on and off grappling battle Maki and Sumo did was top tier. That was pretty cool. Noya was a charis was so charismatic and it really shows why he's a tragic character. Misogyny missile man. All right. 
No, it was domain is just a game of Simon says. Red light, green light. <laughs> exactly. Tiberius says Gege snapped with the sumo moves panel. I agree. I agree. I can't deny that. Uh, that Red Reaper, I love how that's Noya's new name now. I love the misogyny missile name. That's so funny to me, and I will never let go. Foreign Poppy, and we just came off Kashimo versus Akari. That is a good point. Um, we did just come off of Kashimo versus Akari, so anything that came afterwards was going to be a, um, a severe lower level of quality. Um, we were just coming off of a humongous hype train, and I feel like Maki versus Noya does suffer because of that. But either way, looking at it as a whole, just as a fight in general, that brings me the least amount of joy out of every fight in the Cullen game. I have to be honest. Blaine on the moon too. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Ayo, the Tenkaichi music as soon as I join in. Gotta love that Tenkaichi music. I can't believe we got a Dragon Ball Z Tenkaichi 4 announced. How crazy is that, guys? I feel like my childhood is literally just evolving. Anyway, guys, uh, moving on, we move to Maki and Yuji versus Meguna. How do we feel about this fight? Oh, shit. AP. Hey, thank you so much for the $10 donation, brother. I appreciate that. That's his first super chat or their first super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks for supporting the channel. Bro's analysis is S tier. Hey, you're an S tier viewer. I appreciate that donation. Thank you so much. Everyone's saying B. We're getting a lot of mixed. Uh, we're getting a lot of mixed bags here. B S A B low B A S B S. To be honest, high A tier. If the fight drew on longer, we would have seen the best hand-to-hand -hand battle in manga history. Oh, blast, Baru! Thanks so much for the ten dollars. Appreciate your donations as always, brother. You're the best. Uh, sup, no op. A bit late to the party, but how's the stream going? The stream's going great, especially now that you're here. I appreciate both you guys for your donations. You guys are both awesome. If you guys haven't already, make sure you like the stream. Um, the stream's been going well, guys. I've been having fun. I love the JJK fights. I love all of them, and I want to get through this entire fight until we're uh, until we're done with the tier list. We're going to do this entire tier list, guys, whether it takes us five hours or six hours. Uh, that red weave, what are we talking about? So right now we're talking about Maki and Yuji versus Meguna. That's the fight that we're on. Uh, my favorite part, so I love that Meguna. Oh my God, Jerome Simons with the donation, brother. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for your donation. That means so much to me, seriously. Um, I appreciate you uh, for the donation that you just made. I apologize. I don't know how much you just gave me because it's in a different currency. Um, um, but I know it's a big donation because it's showing up as one. So thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate you, Jerome Simons. You are sincerely someone that supports the channel a lot. And I I really, I really love every single one of you guys that is willing to just yeah, give any sort of monetary value to my channel whatsoever. And even if you can't, just the fact that you're here with me right now watching the stream, you like the stream, you watch my videos, every single one of you guys contributes in your own way. And I love and appreciate and all of the support that I get from all of you guys. It seriously means the world to me, but thank you, Jerome Simons. Thank you so much. You didn't even leave a message with that. You just donated it. So thank you, seriously. It's okay. It doesn't need to be converted. I, I, it's, I just, uh, I don't need to know how much it is. I don't need to know how much it is. Cause just the fact that he was willing to do that is more than enough for me, whether it's a dollar, $10, $100, $500. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I mean, seriously, Michael Fuller Roberts. Thank you so much for becoming a best grade member. Seriously. That even means a lot to me too. Thank you so much. Uh, my best grade members seriously support the channel in a, a ways that you can't imagine as well. Um, enjoy your Sakuna badge, enjoy your emojis that you get access to, as well as being able to uh, vote on future videos, as well as ask questions for member Q&As. Michael Lundy said, that's my second account. 
That's so funny. <laughs> Thank you so much for becoming a member in your own way, brother. I was just going to say, so Michael Lundy, now that you're here, um, basically, um, I got sidetracked. So if you're on iOS or iPhone, the reason why the join button shows up is specifically because well the reason why the join button doesn't show up is because apple takes a cut 30 percent of whatever kind of transactions go through an apple app so they actually completely remove the join button from youtube app on ios so that way you can't but what i learned is if i put a join link in the description you guys can click the link and that will let you join me without inquiring the iphone tax so if you do want to become a member and you're on iOS, you just have to go to the description of the stream and click the join link that I put in the description. Uh, I'm not saying any of you guys need to or want to become members, but if you were wondering why it doesn't show up for you on iOS, that's why. Um, Tiberius, thank you so much for the $10 donation. Seriously, you guys are all too much. I, I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the $10. Um, if, um, if MAPPA expands on anything in season two, Loki want to see them show get to have nuclear strike on the, a streak on the village. That would be such a great scene to get, right? Finally, we'd be able to get a scene of fucking ghetto obliterating that fucking, um, of Ghetto just obliterating that uh, village that he does and going on that full rampage after he saves Mimiko and Nanako. That would be crazy. Yo, Jerome Simons, thanks so much for the five gifted subs. I sincerely appreciate that, brother. Jerome Simons, you support the channel in ways I can't even describe, man. Thank you so much. Seriously, thank you so much. Um, everyone that just got gifted a membership, congratulations. Vex, Orange, Get Me Out, Paul Fra Paul Frank, and Riz, Riz the Cat. You guys are all lucky. Thank you so much uh, for being best grade members now. Enjoy your Sakuna badge, access to your emojis. Enjoy uh, your ability to vote on future videos and ask me questions for the member Q&As and also get all of your names put in all future videos. Oh my God. This, <laughs> you guys are you guys are doing too much. I sincerely appreciate every single one of you guys. This is insane, Craze. Thank you so much for the 9.99 donation. I, thank you. I have an iPhone, but I'm gonna go support my boy No Op no matter what. Hashtag No Op Gang. Thank you guys so much. Seriously, this is awesome, guys. I sincerely appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you all so much in the ways that you uh, support the channel. Jerome Simons, don't cry, no op. I, I don't think I'll get to that level. Um, if someone ever donates like a thousand, five thousand, something dollars, that might get me to cry. But I can handle the the love and support. I I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate you, like. I, I sincerely like I just appreciate every single one of you guys. I really can't like say it enough. Like I love doing this, giving you guys content, going on stream and talking about fucking anime and manga to you guys. It's so cool. So seriously, I appreciate every single one of you guys. You guys are all awesome. Um <laughs> So we got a little off track here. Um Jerome Simons, I support stuff I like. Simple as that. Thank you, brother, for everything you do. Thank you so much. Orange, I love that Sakuna badge on you, brother. We're going to make Noop richer than Elon. That's our mission. Hey. 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 Um, but seriously, um, Maki and Yuji versus Meguna. Uh, Tiberius, I also saw that this is your first stream. Thank you so much for being here, brother. That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. I appreciate every single one of you guys that are watching the stream. Um, definitely feel free to like the stream if you haven't already. Um, I appreciate you watching the stream while you're at the office. Love that. And Hamza, I'm actually having dinner as I watch this after a day of fasting. Congratulations on getting through your day of fasting, brother. I know that's tough work. I probably would not be able to do that by any means. So the fact that you're able to do that is sincerely just, uh, you're a better man than me. So good for you. 
Sleeping Dangers here. What's up, Noop? Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. We were all waiting for you. This is the best anime community I've found. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Orange. That means the world to me. Thank you. I, I seriously, that that's an awesome comment to say. Um, but Maki and Yuji versus Maguna is a great fight. It starts off with Maki just pulling up on uh, Maguna like no, he didn't even sense her, right? Which is crazy to say that her heavenly restriction even keeps her invisible from people like Sukuna. Insane. Um, although it's kind of up in contention because she did technically may have seen her um, when he summoned Nue, but whatever. Hi, no operator, your video rocks. Gonna put some dirt in your eye. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you and appreciate you watching my videos. I like that. Sleep in danger, just noticed the free cut. Thanks for uh, noticing that. I, thank you. <laughs> I'm kidding. But like, Maki pulls up, starts doing some pretty awesome things back and forth with Meguna. And Meguna's surprised that Maki's able to keep up with him, right? They have that quick DBZ moment, right? Where they're literally just blitzing back and forth through the destroyed area because Meguna just cleave spider web, as he called it, the ground below. So while it is an awesome fight, it does suffer from being a very slow, um, not slow, very, very short fight. It's very quick. I definitely would say that despite the awesome choreography um, and despite the fact that um, Maguna vs Maki does have some pretty set some pretty put up some pretty good potential fights for later. Um, I think I'm gonna have to put it in a B tier fight. I think it's definitely above Maki and Kamo vs Curse Noya. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's on the same level as like an A tier fight. The can I speed up? comment that Maki gave to Yuji like hey if I speed up are you going to be able to keep up that was awesome explosive grape is here what's going on explosive grape thank you so much for being here slaying 09 anybody trying to cope thinking she being able to sneak up on him means maybe she won't die to Sukuna nah Sukuna's domain expansion is the ultimate counter to Maki which I definitely don't see that just being a small feat I definitely feel like that's gonna that was set up purposefully uh, Maki using Yuji like a weapon was so raw you have to remember that that was also a thing as well Maki literally grabbed Yuji and whipped him around at Sukuna like he literally was a weapon that's so funny that you say that Plus, Sukuna vibing with the boys made me love him. That was a great ending to the uh, primary culling game arc, right? That really was. I don't know if the culling game arc is completely over, but the first half of it definitely is. <clears throat> Shichi Nana, that's the only death I'll accept for Maki, to be honest. I completely agree. It was set up so perfectly. It has to be that way. Moving on, we have Maki versus Mai, which... In the grand scheme of things, seems like a very low tier fight after we have such heavy hitters and we've gone through such crazy fights. Like, the Shibuya incident and everything after that really changes the series entirely, right? Like, everything after the Shibuya incident is has so much stakes to it. It has so much added, like, tragedy. There's the... the the boundaries of Jujutsu society hang on the balance after every fight. Things in the exchange event literally mean absolutely fucking nothing in the grand scheme of things when you consider things like fucking Shibuya. While I do appreciate that Maki and Mai had that emotional level to it, right? Like we get that background on Mai. We tr truly understand where Mai sits and where Mai never wanted to be a sorcerer, but was basically forced to become a sorcerer because Ma Maki had the drive and goal to be one. And in order to stand up for the Zenin clans, you know, if Maki can do it, Mai has to be able to do it too. They're twins. So Mai was essentially punished for Maki's goodwill, which essentially is the reason why Maki was so low in level of strength, because Mai was constantly keeping her down. Mai has an awesome curse technique as well, 
but um it's once again in the grand scheme of things i really feel like it doesn't hold up so while i think the emotional level to it puts it above most other exchange event fights and also the anime definitely upped that fight a lot with the choreography um, i'm gonna have to give it a c i definitely think it sits at a c level fight in the grand scheme of things Uh, uh, Scarl, Scarlet, the cursed Rizless Riz Maiden. It'd be mad funny if Gage up the stakes and a noble uh, and noble phantasm level cursed ability user, like throwing stars and supernovas, antimatter, etc. I'd be super scared to see the kind of shit that Gage would be able to get into if he really wanted to. Like, just Gage is already starting to go off the wall with the different curse techniques that he's coming up with. So I'd be scared to see him start coming up with antimatter and start dealing with particles and science and everything like that. Uh, Tenro 100, more emotional than a real fight. Completely agree. Shichinana, exchange event was just character development, which is crazy to say. Yeah, I mean, it really was mostly just to get us acquainted with the world of Jujutsu society, show us other sorcerers and other students, and for other character development in the story. Um, which, another exchange event fight coming up after this is Maki versus Miwa. Which, I mean... Maki vs. Miwa is fun, very quick, very short, but it's mostly just a bullying, uh, bullying event, right? Like, it's not even really a fight. Like, I would put Maki vs. Mai in C because it has the emotional layer to it, because it's, because it adds a lot to Maki's character, it adds a lot to Mai's character, their dynamic, and it also sheds a lot of light on the Zenin clan and their misogynistic views and everything like that, setting everything up for Maki to eventually take everything down in the future in perfect preparation. Maki versus Miwa is just funny to watch Miwa get destroyed. So I basically think everyone say, oh, I, 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 Orange said a great fight. I thought you were saying it's A tier fight. Foreign Poppy says it's C tier. Blast bars, it's basically Maki stuffing Miwa into a locker. Rock Ryan, your Miwa argument power scaling had me dying. Yo, I hate Miwa. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Maki versus Miwa, I'll have to put it in a D tier because it's just bullying. It's not even really a fight, I would say. Gonna put some dirt in your eye. You do realize Jujutsu Sorcerers are strong because of their of their cursed energy output, right? And reinforcement if you can't even output then 100 then you are just one tenth of your strength oh we're talking about uh megami uh, maguna still i guess right hands were thrown anything that slams miwa is a tier at best at least orange you are on that miwa anti miwa train and i love it i love it by the way guys if you haven't already please consider becoming a member to the channel. At 100 members, I will literally be cosplaying as Miwa, going back on everything that I've ever said and admitting that Miwa will kill Kenjaku. It's not true, but I will admit it. I will admit it in full Miwa cosplay and embarrass the hell out of myself. If you do want to see that happen, please consider hitting the join button and becoming a member to the channel. If you haven't hit the, if you don't have a join button, Definitely hit the join button. There's a link in the description below to become a member. Um, but anyway, uh, Orange said, bro, no, save yourself from the suffering. Hey, I'm offering it as an option. If you want to see me embarrass myself in a Miwa cosplay, then hit that join button right away. Why do you want to shame yourself? Dev Guyquad asked. If that's what the people want, then I'll give the people what they want. Am I wrong? I'm always going to give the people what they want. Uh, next fight is going to move up into Maki vs. Noya. Now, the first Maki vs. Noya fight, I definitely think is an A-tier fucking <laughs> battle, in my honest opinion. I fucking love that fight. 
Oh, Tiberius, thank you so much for the $5. Appreciate that, brother. It means a lot. Kenny IQ 200 sent Miwa as a second trader to keep eyes on Mechamaru. LOL, it's his Orame. Yo, how crazy would that be? What a crazy theory. Like, actually, both Mechamaru and Miwa, the star-crossed lovers, are fucking both traders. That'd be, oh, that'd be crazy. Uh, uh, honestly, and Miwa's actually strong as fuck and actually just like, yo, I would have to admit that I was completely wrong on everything everything if that was the case i literally would have to right i would have to admit it but anyway maki versus noya is still one of my most favorite fights in the series in my honest opinion i really enjoyed it i think it's a really good fight as far as it goes showing how maki has grown right and one of my favorite reasons for this is specifically because maki's main gripe maki's main struggle and main grudge was against Naobito, right? Naobito was the head of the Zenin clan. He's the person that pretty much pushed Maki aside. He's the person that made Maki feel like shit and basically made her oppressed. So most of Maki's struggle was against Naobito, which is why Maki feels like shit when Naobito saves her in the Dagon fight. Naobito unfortunately dies at Jogo's hands. He burns to death, and that's the end of Naobito. So Maki, despite getting that amazing power-up, is never really able to show or even prove to Naobito that she surpassed him. Which, in my opinion, is why Maki versus Naoya, this fight specifically, means so much, because Maki is essentially able to overcome Naobito through Naoya. Naoya is essentially the, the next the next up and coming son of Naobito, right? Naoya is basically the essence of Naobito, reincarnated. He has projection sorcery. He represents the pure and just fluent misogynistic viewpoint that Naobito let flourish in the Zenin clan. So it makes the most sense that Maki would be able to overcome projection sorcery and beat the fuck out of Naoya, punch the shit out of his ass. My, one of my also favorite points of that fight is the fact that while Noya is basically throwing Maki around the entire fight, beating up Maki and just tossing her around the entire Zenin headquarters, Maki is so durable, she's able to take that beating and endure the beating long enough to basically understand the 24 frames per second aspect of projection sorcery and then use that completely against Noya to land her finishing blow. So I love the Maki versus Noya fight. I definitely think it's a top tier fight. I don't think I'd put it in S, but I would definitely put it above the Choso versus Noya fight. I definitely think that it sits pretty high in high ranking. Maki versus Noya right now, top of A in my honest opinion. Top of A for sure. Rock Ryan, thanks so much for being here. Said both Maki versus Noya fights are A tier disagree unfortunately maki versus noya uh, ended up in b tier curse noya ended up in b tier but either way maki versus first noya i think is an a tier fight i think because of what it stands for and what maki did in the fight by being able to keep up with projection sorcery being durable enough to handle all of his hits it's super cool in my honest opinion i love it very much Oh, thank you so much. I don't know how to say your name because one of the characters turned to a big box, but I appreciate you so much for your donation. Thank you so much. I appreciate your viewership. Love your content, heart. I love your viewership. Thank you. Um, do I think Angel is going to come back? Gege done killed all the dolls. <laughs> See, he really did. Uh, I need him to leave the women alone. Lost, And I lost hope for Nobara. Yo, Gege really has been on his misogyny arc, right? Maybe he's closer to Naoya than he thinks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, like, Gege really has um, been tossing Angel aside. He tossed Yuki aside. Nobara's gone. Uh, Maki is the sole goat left, it seems. Euro is still left. We still have Oro, so there's still that. Um, but I think... Um, I think Angel might come back. I don't know if Hana will come back. I think Hana met her character's end. I think Angel narratively still makes sense to continue on in the story. I could potentially be wrong, but thank you so much for your first super chat. I sincerely appreciate your support of the channel. I love 
each and every one of you guys even if you can't monetarily donate i love all of you guys just for being here if you haven't already make sure you like the stream it really helps the channel grow and the stream go further love every single one of you guys up next is pretty much another beatdown vex hey no op what fight we on also i just came back yep we're pretty much getting on to the next fight uh, Orange said, Gage killed Noya, but never killed the idea. Embracing the truth of the Zenin clan. That's so funny. We we like that Maki got rid of the Zenin clan. We stand that. We, we we prefer Maki in the world than the Zenin clan. Oro is playing dead until Sakuna leaves. So true, Sleeping Danger. So true. Um. Anyway, so moving right on, we move to Maki versus Ogi. Um, or... <laughs> Maybe we don't because Blast Baru gave us another $5 donation. Thank you so much, Blast Baru, for the donation. Appreciate your support of the channel. We got to see what happened to Hana after splatting. Angel could join Yuji like with Sakuna. Yeah, I definitely, I, I, I like the idea of Angel becoming a vessel um, or Yuji becoming a vessel to Angel as opposed to Sakuna. I definitely, definitely like the idea of Angel because Angel's mission was never accomplished. Angel's mission of sending all of the um, reincarnated players back to their original time and sending them back to Earth because it goes against the flaws of space and time and just life itself. We never even saw them accomplish that. That's why I think Hana characterly is, characterly is not a word, narratively done. Angel still has reason to exist. So I feel like Yuji could become a vessel to Angel. Savage, thank you so much for being here. Savage is here. My boy got a mean haircut, face cut. Welcome to the stream, boy. Orange agree, we do need more info on Angel too because Yorozu knows about Angel and they all seem to be Hay and Era sorcerers. Completely agree. We definitely need to find out more about them. All right, guys, we move on. Maki versus Ogi is a really good fight um, because it <laughs> it's very quick, but it shows that Maki isn't taking that bullshit anymore. Ogi surprises Maki, and then Maki, after getting her power up, basically returns the favor and slices Ogi's head in half. Nothing really special about it. Quick little fight. Happens really nice, and then what we can do is uh, we can put this in D tier because that's what Ogi basically amounts to. Ogi essentially amounts to nothing. Ogi essentially amounts to fodder and is just embarrassing. Just ugh. Guys, seriously, I appreciate all your donations. You're not you're, you're not derailing the stream whatsoever. Um, seriously, I appreciate every single one of you guys. If you're if you're donating, you guys are all awesome. I love every single one of you. Um, so after um, Maki versus Ogi, wasted a fire technique on Ogi. I completely agree. Sleeping danger. We got to see blazing courage for two seconds. Brad DeAngelis is trying to plead a case. He says that panel where Ogi dodges the swing from Maki was kind of cool. Right, but I would say it's kind of a detour because it really amounts to nothing. Somebody Tall is here. Thank you so much, Somebody Tall, for being here. Maybe Angel ditches Hana and switches to Nobara. That, even that would be cool. But Nerva agrees he couldn't even amount to a good fight for us. Exactly. Maybe if he had a little bit of a better back and forth with Maki after Maki got that power up, I'd give it a C. But nah, absolutely not. Up next is Maki versus the Zenin clan. And that goes hard. Maki versus the Hay. You know, like Maki versus all those fucking uh, Kukuru unit squad members. It's such a crazy fucking beatdown that Maki is able to eliminate an entire clan. Maki Itachi Uchiha is an entire clan, which is just, it, it really is just an awesome moment in the series, right? Can, can we not deny that we've been seeing this come for so long, Maki finally get her dead to rights and fucking crush the Zenin clan herself, by the way, like she said she would? I definitely think it's a top tier moment. Um, I definitely see it being a B-tier fight. 
um, top of B tier because while I wouldn't put it at the same level as like an actual fight of Choso Noya, Kenjaku Choso, Kenjaku versus Yuki, or Maki versus Noya as a whole, um, I definitely think it's the perfect lead up to Maki versus Noya. Um, and Maki versus Noya is clearly the highlight of that part. So while I would put Maki um, versus Zenin Clan at high B tier, probably top B tier, in my honest opinion. Are the reincarnated sorcerers locked in their gender they're born in? So if you're a male, you can only reincarnate in a male's body. Normally, I would say that's true based off the trends that we've seen. But as we know, we do know that Kenjaku doesn't give a fuck about gender. So who knows? It might be possible to not do that. Michael Lundy, I want to say S just off the Kill Bill reference alone. True, the Kill Bill reference is pretty cool, but no, I'm going to leave it in D tier. Um, and also uh, the Maki versus Zenin clan, I'm going to leave in B, in B tier. Uh, Foreign Poppy also says S plus the Kill Bill reference. True, the Kill Bill reference is pretty cool. I, I won't deny it. I'm not denying that. Uh, Kenjaku was taking back shots from Jin. It's the truth. Orange says, what the fuck is Orame's gender? Orame may be a man that is put in a girl's body or vice versa. Who knows? Orame is an androgynous. They don't, they don't have a gender. It hasn't been re it hasn't been revealed yet. So we move on. We move on to another Maki fight, apparently. Uh, Ma Megami and Maki versus Hanami. How do we feel about Megami and Maki versus Hanami, guys? That is a quick little boom, 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 little quick little fight. It's a small little area. Um, but the cool thing about it is we get that awesome panel and moment where they cross slash Hanami and cut off their, their eyes. I think that's super cool. Orame is a monk, so they may be a eunuch, by the way. Also consider that, guys, in chat. Um... But Meg, uh, Megi, Megami just tossing hidden cl uh, playful cloud to Maki and letting that just fucking absolutely demolish Hanami is a really cool moment. Um, I I don't want to put it in a in a high tier because it is really short. It is a really small moment in the in the series. But I'd have to say it is really cool. Would I put it at the same level as Maki and Yuji versus Maguna, Gojo versus Jogo, Maki versus the Zenin? Probably not, but I would put it at a pretty cool moment. I'd put it above Hakari versus Charles, I think. Low B, it's pretty small, but it's kind of cool when Divine Dog appears. How could we get when Divine Dog appears and slashes Hanami's arm, right? That is a really cool moment. I'm still keeping it at C. I think Maki and Kamo versus Curse Noya is a better team up against a better Curse Spirit. So I'm definitely putting them above Megami and, Megami and Maki versus Hanami. Although I do think it's a really cool moment. Because right after their cool cross slash moment, they do get Maliwap pretty quick by Hanami. Hanami puts that curse butt in Megami and then fucking just grabs Maki and is ready to kill her. So C tier it is. Next up, we have Megami and Panda versus Kirara, which, in my honest opinion, is also one of my favorite fights in the Perfect Preparation arc, the little mini arc before we get to Culling Games. Um, I think Kirara's curse technique is super cool. Michael Lundy's laughing because I said Maki and Kama was a team up. I guess you're right. I guess that's being very generous. I wouldn't really call that a team up either. More so one one man show, one woman show. Um, but anyway, yeah, Megami and Panda vs. Kirara, I think is a really cool fight. I think Kirara's curse technique, Love Rendezvous, um, is super cool. I think it beats a lot of the people, a, a lot more people than you would think, because I think a lot of people, if you don't have that prior knowledge on star constellations, it's going to be really hard to go against their curse technique. Um, and also, Kirara is just able to use it in a bunch of different ways. They're not afraid to, you know, jump onto cars and uh, add their uh, curse mark to stars or add their curse marks to debris to utterly crush the opponent. Um, I think Kirara is a great versatile user user of their curse technique. And I think the way that Megami shows that he's able to beat someone that's his senior um, by just overall his ex excellence and growth with the 10 shadows technique is a really, really cool moment to the point that I would actually honestly put this fight in B tier. 
I would have to say I put this fight in B tier. Megami and, Pan Megami and Panda vs. Kirara is B tier. And I agree with Orange. Kirara is underrated as fuck. The Jogo of Sorcerers. Completely true. Completely true. Teddy's World Insane had to stop by. Drop my boy a like. Appreciate you being your brother. Teddy's World Insane, one of the OG fans. Love you supporting the channel. Thank you so much for watching the videos, watching the streams, and being with me my whole career for the most part, guys. I appreciate, honestly, every single one of you guys that's here right now. You guys do awesome work. Just I, you guys just are all awesome people and i love all of you if you haven't already please like the stream it really helps me it really helps the stream grow follow teddy's world insane because he's got he's an awesome person so follow in his footsteps shichi nana said b just for the technique alone possibly uh tenro said high c low b love the strategy i completely agree there's the strategy that really sells it for me overall just the the way that that fight was coordinated and put together and the way that megami was able to overcome the technique i thought was really cool i thought it was a fun fight while i was reading it so i can't complain next up we have megami versus the finger bearer which other than being an awesome moment for Megami to reveal his Chimera Shadow Garden, his domain expansion is honestly a pretty mid fight in my honest opinion. I think it kind of sits at the same level as a Gojo vs. Jogo fight, right? Where it's really cool because we get to see Megami... Well, in the beginning, Megami isn't winning, right? <laughs> in the beginning, Megami kind of gets uh, mollywopped by the bearer. And then after he realizes that Gojo told him he needs to be selfish, we get that nice little flashback of him training with Gojo. And we also get that nice little quote of Sakuna telling Megami that Megami could be a lot stronger if he just tried. If he just tried, right? If Megami just put his things to the test. So that being said, that makes me really feel like it's kind of a very similar level to Gojo versus Jogo because seeing Megami unlock his domain expansion and just seeing the domain expansion just utterly demolish the finger bearer is such a great moment. It's a really cool character development moment for Megami. I can't deny it. I have to admit, it's a really awesome character moment for Megami, and that's what sells it. Just seeing Chimera Shadow Garden alone, be able to use multiple Nue, all the gamma tripping up the finger bearer, and the fact that Megami can just turn into a shadow clone as like substitution jutsu, super cool, makes up the whole fight, which is why, like I said, it's at the same level of, for me as Gojo versus Jogo. Um, so I'm gonna put them at the same level of B tier. B tier fight. Well, I dead ass have to go now. Got a meeting. Y'all be cool. Appreciate the content. Tiberius, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you so much for taking your time and joining me when you could. You are an awesome person. Thank you. Chichi Nana, the shadow clones were so dope. I agree. That's one of my favorite fucking moments of the fucking uh, fight is that the fact that he can literally turn into a shadow clone and use that shadow goop to literally just fucking literally just fucking absorb damage and as we see later in his fight he just uses it in so many other cool ways it's super cool super cool Ag agreed megami kicking his sacrificial nature away was top tier fuck sake super true super true megami always falling unconscious at the end of all his fights is crazy funny i just noticed that that's a really good point nerva to really point out he does fall asleep at the at all of his after all of his fights i don't know why he does that i don't know why he does that dr danger says next fight is s tier that's a bold proclamation bold proclamation megami versus group reggie I do like this fight. Megami versus Group Reggie is such an awesome moment. I'm going to put Megami, Megami versus Reggie right after this because they do go hand in hand. Megami versus Group Reggie is cool because Megami, if you... Isn't it crazy that Megami is able to go up against three to four people all at once at the level of sorcery that he's at? Megami truly is a high grade one level sorcerer at this point. His willingness to actually kill that one person, Shizuru, is one of the most defining moments for Megami's character and proof that he's really just indulging his selfishness and showing the fact that what i want is what i want and i'm not going to settle for anything less than what i want if you stand in my way i will murk you i will take you out of my way as megami says 
Megami is able to literally just show his versatility and like I said, getting out of that group scenario with Nue. And also, thank God Takuma showed up because he was able to split up Hazanoki and Reggie in order to actually just fight Reggie one-on-one. -on -one. Because while I don't think that uh, Megami would have been able to take on Hazanoki and Reggie at the same time, I don't think it would have been because Megami was weaker. I think it would have just been because they would have overwhelmed him with their abilities to AoE fight. Um, but I digress. I love the Megami group fight. I think the Megami group fight uh, versus Reggie is definitely an A tier fight. 110% an A tier fight. That five star hotel receipt is OP. The fake weave is here. Everybody, welcome the fake weave. Thanks for showing up. Appreciate you and thanks for your input. That five star hotel receipt is pretty OP. I could use a five star hotel and spa resort receipt right now. I, I wish I had Reggie's curse technique. That would be pretty fucking awesome. I love that Shugazm is just like a little bit behind everything. So like he's just, they're just like, uh, chatting about like shit that's art uh, they're talking they're on kirara right now i love that it's so funny sleeping danger hazanoki is a goat thank you so much hazanoki does not get enough love hazanoki is one of the greatest fucking uh one of the greatest calling game characters might not be the strongest but great Diavolo back just started uploading that nine hour heat. Yo, Diavolo is uploading his entire Jujutsu Kaisen story explained video. You guys need to go check that out once that shit uploads or however long it fucking takes. I'm sure that's going to take a whole ass fucking day. A whole nine hour fucking video on just Jujutsu Kaisen is actually insane to me. That's so much fucking work over the course of a whole year that he put together, man. I just I, I respect it. Orange man's got his priorities. He might be an MKK stand, but he spits sometimes. Reggie did have one of the coolest techniques. I love Reggie's technique. I love Reggie Star as a whole. Reggie was such a cool character. Reggie really was an awesome fucking character. Um, Megami versus Reggie. Does Megami versus Reggie sit? On the same level as all the S tier fights. I think that's kind of crazy to say. While I really like Megami's fight with Reggie, Megami being able to outsmart Reggie and lure him into the stadium. Um, Megami's overall use of the 10 shadows technique and being able to deal with all the different things that Reggie was throwing at him, fucking carrots, fucking flower pots, scooters, spider webs, everything. And then once you get to the stadium, the gymnasium, and Megami summons domain expansion is when things really pick up, right? The overall evolution of Chimera Shadow Garden is ultimately such a great fight. It makes it so fun. We get to see Megami fully evolve his Shadow Clones where he's beating the shit out of Reggie with three or four multiple different people. Um, we also see him abuse the, the weight that his Shadow can hold and the fact that he can drown Megami or drown Reggie inside of his Shadow if he keeps him in there. Megami drops Max Elephant from the roof of the domain expansion. And then overall, everything was a full long-term con for hiding the fact that Megami could still use Divine Dog in the long run. I might be talking myself into making this an S tier fight. It is a super underrated fight, Diavolo. It really is. It really is a super underrated fight. The fake weeb, that carrot or radish being a knife was so funny. It really was. I love Reggie's technique. The fact that he was able to just confuse and just throw a bunch of different shit. And he was just like, yeah, I just threw a two day spa resort on. I'm fully healed. Like you mentioned before the fake weeb. So crazy to me. Utterly insane, right? That he was able to just fucking do that shit. Um, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. Really appreciate you guys all being here. It really means a lot to me. 
do I say it's an S tier fight? Tough to say. I'll put it at the top of A for right now. Top of A for right now. I definitely don't think it's as enjoyable as Mahito vs. Mechamaru, Gojo vs. Toji, Gojo vs. The Disaster Curses. There needs to be another tier. Because, because there just there just needs to be a new tier, because Akari vs. Kashimo really is like a level of its own. Hakari vs. Kashimo really is a level of its own. Like I'm just looking at the S tier and I'm like, look, honestly, the S tiers are great fights, but Kashimo vs. Akari is just so much higher than all of them. Um, Megami vs. Reggie is definitely top of top of A tier, I think. I think while Reggie's design of, as someone mentioned, random bullshit go, uh, <laughs> um, I still think um, it doesn't quite meet the criteria that the S tier fights do. The S tier fights are just so climactic, so engaging, and just absolutely insane. Orange said Reggie gets S. If not, Higuruma is denied his S tier fight. Higuruma is a different story. I'll give it top of grade A, and that's the last negotiation I am making. Next up. Coming up is Megami vs. Kamo. Hey, Creams is here. What's going on? Cream said one tier list wasn't enough for you, eh, Noob? Of course not. Demon time, you love to see it. Oh, yeah. I just made uh, Diavolo and the fake weeb moderators because why the fuck not? Um... Kamo and Fake Weeb says Kamo's thing didn't really move me, not gonna lie. Yeah, Kamo's thing didn't really hit me, and also the fact that um Kamo's thing didn't really hit me in Naoya's fucking fight either. Uh, Diablo said the tier list more like a money printer, baby. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what it is. No, but like I figured break week fight tier list would be fun. Um I wanted to do arc tier list, but I felt like fight tier list would have been longer. And I was right. We're still not even fucking halfway done. Ah, well, we might be halfway done. Um, but yeah, Megami vs. Combo. While I think it is one of the better fights in the exchange event, I don't think it's one of the better fights in the exchange event for the same reason I think Maki vs. Mai is a C tier fight. I think Megami vs. Combo is a C tier fight specifically because... It shows Megami's growth as a sorcerer, and it's also one of the first instances we get of two skilled sorcerers going up against each other, right? Kamo is a high-grade sorcerer. Megami is a high-grade sorcerer with his 10 Shadows technique evolving. So I definitely think that Megami vs. Kamo is the most one of the most enjoyable fights of the exchange event, not because it has any emotional stakes or because Kamo's backstory really makes a difference, but because it's the most fun fight to watch out of the exchange event. Um, I definitely think out of the options that we have in the exchange event, I think it's really cool. And then as the fake weeb just mentioned, the Elephant Nui sequence was cold, though with his os playing. Well... The Elephant Nui sequence was cold, though, with his Oss playing. Exactly. I think that moment is really cool. It's like an intro for Kamo showing his blood manipulation and how it works. It's more stylistic, in my opinion, than anything and just looks good. You guys literally brought up opinions. Thank you so much, because that's that's exactly how I wanted to describe it. So I feel like Megami vs. Kamo sits in C tier. Definitely wouldn't put it in B, but C tier. Now... Talking about B tier, I think Megami vs. Sukuna might be that moment. Megami vs. Sukuna is a cool fight. 
not an A fight, not as S tier fight because they're really not that great. You know, it's really not that long of a fight. It doesn't have multiple chapters worth of straight up hands and action like Akari versus Kashima or like the S tier fights. But Megami versus Sukuna is a fun fight to watch. It also is Megami's first real chance to get literally overpowered and perception blitzed and shown he has no choice but to summon Maharaga um, and possibly deal with the fact that the person he saved, Yuji, wasn't really the best choice to make. Um, it was a selfish decision that he made and it might not have been the best decision. Um, but watching Megami get bodied, as Slain09 said, was kind of fun to watch. Um, so I definitely feel that um, yeah, Orange said wouldn't call it a fight. More of Sakuna playing his favorite game, beat children. Yeah, true, very true. Michael Lundy can't wait until Shibuya so we can see a real blood manipulation user. Choso is the staple poster boy child.
Rock Ryan, your Momo power scaling versus Inumaki had me dying. Yo, Momo beats Inumaki. It's so true. I'll I'll literally fight that argument till my last breath, my dying day. I will die on that hill all day, every day. I still get people that comment on my fuck as Vex is saying. I still get people that comment on my all 16 Jujutsu High students ranked video that tell me they're not they're stopped watching the video because they fucking hate the fact that I ranked Momo above Inumaki. Sucks to suck. The truth hurts. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on, we have Panda vs Mechamaru. Panda vs Mechamaru is pretty much, I would say, very similar to all the other exchange event fights. To be completely honest with you. While it's a really cool moment in developing Panda's character, showing us what Mechamaro is capable of doing, um, the mode Albatross Beam, which is kind of crazy, introducing us to Panda's Gorilla Mode, which is absolutely insane, the unblockable drumming beat, one of my favorite Panda techniques. It's really a great fight, but in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, again, same as like Maki vs. Mai, Megami vs. Kamo, while it may have been a great fight in that fucking moment, it's not really that great of a fight anymore, right? Because there are just so many other things that really outclass it. Although now that I'm thinking about it, it really is somewhat of a better fight than I would say Maki vs. Mai. Somewhat of a better fight than Megami vs. Kamo, and somewhat of a better fight than Nobara vs. Momo, because Panda was just an awesome character in that moment, and Mechamaro was also an awesome character in that moment. Both of their character arcs going up against each other was really a great dynamic, in my opinion. I have to say, I think Panda vs. Mechamaro might be the best fight in exchange event, now that I'm thinking about it. Michael, Michael Lenny brings, he hit him with the Aura Aura. Is, pa is Panda vs. Mechamaru a B-rank fight? It might be. I like it. Cultural Universe asked the asking the real questions. Random question. Do I think Maki vs. Mikasa would be a good fight? That's funny as fuck. Um, that would be cool. Yeah, I think Maki would fucking no blitz Mikasa, but that's another story. I'm putting Panda and Mechamaru in B tier. I'm just doing it. I'm making my own way. You guys can't stop me. I'm choosing to do it, and you guys aren't stopping me. Um, it's going in B tier, in my honest opinion. It's going in fucking B tier. That's just what's happening, and you guys are going to have to deal with it. Eh, now that I'm thinking about it, no, probably C tier. But it's one of the more fun C tiers. One of the better C tiers. Top of C tier. Top of C tier. Top of C tier Panda vs. Mechamaro. Top of C tier for Panda vs. Mechamaro. That's what we're gonna do. High C tier, exactly what Savage said. Agreed. Alright, next up is Sakuna vs. Jogo. And I think we already know where this is going to go. Same with the fight that comes up right after this in Sakuna vs. Maharaga. Both of these fights are clearly S-tier fights. Some of the best fights in the Shibuya Incident. And clearly one of the main reasons why the Shibuya Incident is just so memorable and vivid in my memory as a whole. Like, Sakuna vs. Jogo just utterly proves the fucking pure stomping the pure power level of 15 finger Sukuna, which is utterly insane. The fact that he's just throwing Jogo around everywhere and the fact that he's able to literally just slice Jogo's hands before Jogo can even throw more fire attacks at him. Like Jogo starts to fire, throw a fire blast and Sukuna literally just cuts this man's hands off, slams him into the ground, takes his head and throws him through multiple floors of a building Jogo blows that building up. They fly away. Jogo summons a meteor, and none of those attacks work. Literally, none of those attacks work. Exactly like Savage Sag said, if it hit, Sakuna just shows up, shows up, and crisscross applesauce. Like, yeah, that probably would have did damage if it hit. So insane. 
and the fact that like they both go head to head in that fire battle and it just means absolutely nothing to Sukuna because Sukuna just summons up that fire and ma matches his flames in every way to the point where they end up in the cursed realm and Sukuna literally just goes yeah you were strong but honestly I'm stronger and boom just snaps and like fucking Roy Mustang and Jogo literally just gets fucking eviscerated burned into oblivion one of the coolest fights in the series it's 10 times better than Gojo versus Jogo because it has a lot more stakes and Jogo's at a much more close you know matchup Everyone's saying that Sukuna vs. Jogo was great, but it wasn't really a fight. It should be an A tier, while Sukuna vs. Maharaga is definitely the better fight. That open moment, like Fake Weeb is saying, is just such a cool fucking moment. Yeah, during the fight, he literally just threatens Panda and Kusakabi. That's such an awesome moment to mention, Chichinana. He literally says, all humans in the vicinity, don't move at all. Because if you do, I'm going to beat this. You're all going to die. Like, that is so crazy. The beauty of Sukuna versus Jogo is that it wasn't a fight. Such a good character moment for Sukuna, and it gave a good ending to Jogo's character. Yeah, you know what? I see the vision. I see the vision. I definitely don't consider Sukuno vs. Jogo an A tier fight or an S tier fight. I'll put it definitely right around the top of A with Megami vs. Reggie. Sukuno vs. Maharaga, though, definitely an S tier. The Malevolent Shrine against Maharaga. The fact that Sukuna is just able to match a Maharaga blow for blow. He takes that first hit and goes, damn, if I was a cursed spirit, I would have got fucked up. He analyzes every aspect of that fight in such a quick moment, uses dismantle and cleave in ways we've never seen before, as well as just combine his domain expansion with the fire arrow that he just used on Jogo to literally beat a monster whose sole purpose is to adapt to any enemy it goes up against. Sukuna vs. Maharaga is definitely a step above Sukuna vs. Jogo, I'd have to say, and that's what sells me on Sukuna vs. Maharaga being an S-tier fight, whereas Sukuna vs. Jogo definitely sits on the top of A with the rest of the boys. Because Sukuna vs. Jogo, at the end of the day, is very similar to Gojo vs. Jogo, an utter beatdown, whereas Sukuna vs. Maharaga is definitely a much more open, much more back and forth, much more exciting fight to see Sukuna try and topple a beast that can literally adapt to any phenomena. Super cool, in my opinion. Super cool, super cool. Um, definitely one of the better fights in the series. I like the way that this tier list is coming out. We're two hours and 23 minutes into this, guys. I appreciate every single one of you guys that has been with here me since the beginning. If you came in late, doesn't matter. There's no such thing as late to a no operator stream. We were waiting for you guys to get the party started. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Seriously, it all means a lot to me. You guys are all my favorite part of the day. Everyone, if you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. Appreciate every single one of you guys for being here. Liking the stream helps the stream grow, helps the channel grow, helps me in a lot of different ways. I sincerely appreciate all of you guys being here. And I especially appreciate all my members. All my best grade members, you guys are awesome. The real winners. Up next is Takaba vs. Iori, which I don't know about any of you guys, but I have a soft spot for this fight. I genuinely really much enjoy Takava vs. Iori. Like, <laughs> Iori is one of my favorite characters. Iori has an awesome curse technique. I like the fact that he can just blow up parts of his body and this use reverse curse technique to heal it. Um, I think that's super cool. Takaba is just literally such a fucking hacks fucking ability, such a hacks technique and such a troll. And just like the worst kind of troll too, like the unfunny troll. The troll that trolls you in a way that's so unfunny, it just kills the mood. Like, talk about being compared to someone that could potentially rival Gojo in power. 
is just saying so much. And Iori literally finding absolutely no way to stand a chance against someone like Takaba just says a lot. Because Iori's ability is very destructive. It does a lot of damage from what is seen. So like, it's super true that this is an awesome fight. Takaba being able to match Yuri blow for blow, everything like that. I honestly, it's awesome that it, we were able to get that far with Takaba's curse technique and seeing the way that it works. Um, I'll, overall, I feel like the fight doesn't hold much stake. It's really not in the grand scheme of things. It's very forgettable, but I feel like it's a fun little ha ha he he fight um, that goes back and forth. Would I put it on the same level as something like Chimera Shadow Gar Mega Me Awakening Chimera Shadow Garden on the same level as a Maki beating Noya in the domain expansion? No, but I would definitely put it at a high C tier level. I'm um, definitely a high C tier level right around Maki and Kama vs. Curse Noya, Mega Me and Maki vs. Hanami, Hakari vs. Charles, right around that level I feel like is a very reasonable, very realistic um, spot to put that fight into. It's a good fight to forget it for a bit what happened in Shibuya. Right, the tragedies of Shib the tragedies of Shibuya we have never fully recovered from. The comedic aspect of the series has never been what it was before. And rightfully so, I mean, all of the have is nothing to be is nothing but things to be sad about. So, it doesn't surprise me. But either way, very funny. Very funny to me. I love how he just says F it after he finds out Reggie dies, right? He does just go, you know what? Fuck this shit. I, I, I don't even need to be a part of this. I'm just going to chill out for the rest of the culling game. Orange, welcome back. We are now moving on to Toto versus Megami, which is a great fight. Another bullying, absolute destructive beatdown, but one that Megami needed in order to realize that just fusing his Shikigami wasn't enough. He was going to have to up his physical stats, up his mental stats, up stats that had nothing to do with his 10 Shadows technique. While he also needed to level up his 10 Shadows technique as well, for sure, he definitely needed to do that, right? Toto is a pure just showing that Megami had no chance of beating anybody physically without upgrading his 10 Shadows technique into his whole arsenal, which is where we get the bottomless well part of his curse of his curse technique, which as we see now in perfect preparation in the culling game, he's able to basically just dip in and out of his shadow to accomplish so much. So this was a great learning curve for Megami. It showed him that he literally did not stack up to people that they were about to fight in a little bit. Um, but I definitely think it sits in D tier with the rest of them. It's really just a bullying fight. Um, Megami does get pretty much molly whopped here and Panda and uh, Toge have to save him with Toge's cursed speech. So uh, definitely ending up in D tier. Sorry about that, but uh, that's just how it has to go. And I think that may end up being the exact same um, result we get out of the uh next uh the next fight that we have on this list as well although for once this may not be a bullying uh reason for ending up in d tier this is ending up in d tier because for one toge combo megami versus hanami is very short it's basically just a run through the jujutsu high headquarters or wherever the fuck they are at the moment until they end up on the roof for hanami basically takes out Kamo, takes out Inumaki, and then Maki has to save Megami to where then Megami and Maki then pick up right afterwards. Hanami showing up on them was a really terrifying and cool moment, but in my honest opinion, it's not really a fight. It's not really anything that matters. Um, so I'm going to have to say that I'm going to probably put Toge, Inumaki, and Kamo Oh, Toge Inumaki, Kamo Noritoshi, and Megami vs. Hanami in D tier. Um, Damien Hogue, I gotta peace out, Noah, but when you're done with this, you need to make a community post of end of the end of the list. Maybe I will, you know what? Because I can do that. I can post that to the community post of the tier list, and then I can also post um, the link to the VOD. So you know what? I probably will do that. That's a good idea. Thanks for the idea, and thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you guys. 
Sleeping Danger, back when Inumaki was cool. Orange says controversial. Inumaki was never cool. Ooh, shit. That's some fighting words. Inumaki has a cool curse technique. Not a cool character. Very underutilized. Very sad to see, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? You can't complain. So yeah, that's ending up in D tier real quick. And here, right after this, we have another bullying situation. We have Toji vs. Dagon, which is just a one-sided, destructive moment where Toji literally interrupts the Dagon fight, invites himself into that fight, and then literally just makes Dagon his bitch. Like, he literally grabs Playful Cloud from Maki, throws Maki off of Playful Cloud, by the way, and just literally just starts whipping the shit out of Dagon, completely destroys Dagon's toughest Shikigami in his domain expansion, and then literally Dagon stands no chance against him. Toji literally just eliminates a disaster curse, a curse spirit that's been give a curse spirit at a level that's been giving us problems and has been at a reasonable villain power level for the whole length of the series up until this point at least. Toji literally just destroys that disaster curse like it's nothing inside of Dagon's domain. And we also find out that everyone's whole thing was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, Dagon's domain expansion was being held back. That's the only reason why Toji was able to survive. No. Now we know from Maki vs. Noya, Toji literally would not have even been picked up by Dagon's um, one hit kill factor. So Toji literally would have ignored that and still beat the shit out of Dagon. Definitely a really fun fight, but it's mostly just a bullying moment at the end of the day. So I feel like in entertainment value, I feel like it kind of sits at a similar level to where Gojo vs. Jogo does, where it's really just showing how strong Toji sits and characters like Toji will sit at a level compared to the disaster curses. Um, I don't think it's an A fight by any means. I think it's a really cool moment that Toji beats the shit out of Dagon compared to the rest of them. But I do think that Toji coming in and interrupting the fight does not compare to the rest of the Dagon fight. Um, I definitely will put it in B right around Gojo, ver uh, Gojo vs. Jogo uh, because it's a very similar entertain entertainment level kind of fight and just overall just... In the grand scheme of things, it sits in kind of the same place. So definitely a B-tier fight, in my opinion. Guys, how are we all feeling right now? We're breaking through this tier list. We're getting through it. We're pretty much almost done with this. Get into the last couple fights, which are honestly a lot of fodder fights. So we will be able to get through them pretty quick, but we do still have some heavy hitters remaining. So I hope you guys are enjoying the stream. I appreciate every single one of you guys being here. Feel free to like the stream. Um, and yeah, thank you guys all so much. So moving on now um, to the next fight. Orange, good, but tired. Been waiting for Higuruma this whole stream. Hey, Higuruma. He's coming up. He's coming up. He's coming up. We're going to be getting to some pretty big fights now. Orange going to fight for his rightful place in S tier. I don't think you have to fight that hard. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Toji vs. Ghetto. I feel like Toji vs. Ghetto is kind of literally very similar to what I was just saying about Toji vs. Dagon. To where it's literally a fight where... While Ghetto puts up a decent brawl against it, he never stood a chance against Toji. Never had any chance in hell at going against Toji and being able to come above on top on this. I definitely don't see that happening whatsoever. And the main reason behind that... Like Michael Lundy said, it's a hate crime from Toji. It's literally a hate crime. Toji gave him a wedgie and a swirly. He literally just embarrassed Ghetto. Took Ghetto's two strongest Shikigami and literally cut through one of them and then told the other one he was she was ugly. And then still won. Beaten by a monkey like me. Toji really did bring the heat that fight. 
Um, I definitely wouldn't put it on A tier. I would say it's very similar to Toji versus Dagon and where it's an enjoyable brawl, um, but I don't think it really makes much of a difference. Uh, Orange said Ghetto probably thought it was a monkey hate crime when he went on his racism arc. Ah, we missed Ghetto's racism arc. Good times. <laughs> Next up is the big duo fight with Yuji and Megami versus Awasaka, which in my opinion is a very enjoyable fight and a pretty good read. Um, the fact that Awasaka's um, curse technique, the reversal or the inverse is very interesting because it means that any real damage is reduced to nothing and any nothing damage is increased to everything. So, like, it doesn't involve things like, you know, a fly touching him, as Gege mentions, he kind of elaborates. Um, but, like, if you were, as we see that you, when Yuji eventually beats him, Yuji just has to hold back his punches and not hit as hard as he possibly can, and it deals severe damage. Because Megami tries everything, dropping Max Elephant on the guy, using Rabbit Escape to kind of move everything around. Like, it's a very readable fight, and the fact that both Megami and Yuji struggle with fighting together as a team is very interesting because they are both two entirely different types of fighters. Yuji's a big brawler, heavy hand-to-hand -hand -hand fighter, and Megami is more mid-range, long-range, using a Shikigami to his advantage and then getting in close with his Shikigami. He can fight close range, but Yuji definitely takes the case on close range. Awasaka is a character that doesn't really matter much, his backstory is kind of whatever. He's just a curse user that needed to fill a slot so Me Yuji and Megami could have a tag team fight. Um, honestly, in my opinion, um, I think it's kind of a B tier fight. Probably low end of B tier. Right around Megami versus Akuna, Mahito versus Nanami. I wouldn't put it A tier. Some of you guys are saying C tier. You know what? Yeah, I'd say top of C tier. I completely agree with that. Um, cause I would put Megami and Panda versus Kirara, Maki, Daido, and Mayo versus Nayo at a higher level. So, I definitely think Yuji and Megami versus Awasaka should probably be top of C tier. Fun fight, readable, but not something I would go out of my way to read, you feel me? Chichi Nana, was that the only fight we've seen Yuji and Megami tag team? I believe so. That was the most major Yuji and Megami tag team fight that we got if they ever did another one. <laughs> If someone who mattered had inverse, the technique would go hard. Possibly, completely possible, very possible. But moving right along now, we get into Yuji and Nanami versus Mahito. Honestly, an awesome fight. Something that really, um, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't hold a lot of weight anymore. But in the first half of season one, when we were watching anime, that was such a cool fight. It made a lot of sense. Mahito's domain expansion, Mahito awakening right at that moment when Nanami and Yuji finally found the best way to beat the shit out of him. You know, Mahito's just pure attempts to just destroy Yuji's mental state using transfigured humans, killing Junpei. Just everything that was a part of that fight was absolutely insane. It really was like an iconic moment in the battle. I'd have to say that while it's probably at the end of the day a B tier fight wise, the overall stakes and just just think it the the critical piece that this fight holds and the the building of the Yuji and Mahito grudge and mortal enemies. Sukuna, as Savage the Sag mentioned, Sukuna literally just looking at Mahito and telling him your technique won't work on me. Get the fuck out of here. Maito makes any fight that he's in a great fight. And while I don't think it's an S tier fight, I would definitely say Yuji and Nanami versus Maito is, if anything, top of B tier. Dagon versus the three. What I say Dagon versus the three is, is as exciting as Yuji versus and Mahito, Yuji and Nanami versus Maito. Nah. Top of B. Yuji and Nanami versus Maito is top of B tier for sure. 
top of B tier for sure. I don't think it sits A tier with Chosi, Choso versus Noya, Kenjako versus Yuki, Megami versus Reg, Group Reggie, Maki versus Noya, Sakuna versus Jogo. I'm not as excited to go back and watch or read Yuji and Nanami versus Maito as I am those fights that are in A and S and God. So I definitely say that while it is an awesome fight and has a lot of pivotal moments for the story, I definitely feel like it's got to sit top of B in my honest opinion. It's just got to sit top of B, right? It has to. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. I appreciate every single one of you guys being here. You guys are all amazing people. And I most especially appreciate my best grade members. You guys make everything happen. And you guys support the channel in ways you don't even know. So thank you very much. Now, one thing that I'd say is a very easy A tier um, fight is going to be the fight that we're moving on to pretty much next, which is Yuji and Nobara versus Eso and Kachizu. Yuji and Nobara versus Eso and Kachizu, the double black flash, the fact that they're able to overcome that fight just through the sheer force of will. Eso literally lands that decay ability on them. And even in amongst all of the possibilities of if too long goes on and they perish away and die, they're not going to give up without a fight. Nobara's chicken, where she starts slamming pins into her wrist to try and give Kachizu and Esu pain, is one of the most dopest and most unhinged things I've seen in the fucking world. When they switch places to switch op opponents and Yuji starts duking it out with Esso hand to hand is awesome the anime definitely made this 10 times more iconic than it needed to be with the remember Aust going off R.I.P. the death painting bros as Rock Ryan mentions the power of friendship led to their defeat which is honestly sad Orange mentions one of the only times I'll accept the power of friendship. No Nobara has multiple great moments in this fight, and so does Yuji. And once again, the double black flash you just cannot beat, right? That is such an iconic moment that the anime only literally evolved and improved upon heavily. So I have to go ahead and say that Yuji and Nobara versus Esso and Kachizu is definitely an A tier, not S tier, definitely an A tier fight for sure. I enjoy that a lot more than fucking Kenjaku versus Choso. As Vex says, the music, the choreography, Nobara being a badass, the animation going hard, everything is just perfect for that fight. It's not an S tier, but I definitely say it's a very high A tier. For sure. Here we go, boys. The next god tier fight. Yeah, Yuji and Nobara versus Mahito. Yuji and Nobara versus Mahito. Yuji versus Mahito in general is one of the greatest fights in the entire world. At this point in the story, Yuji and Nobara... No, Yuji is basically suffering a lot of damage at this point. Everything's looking really bad for him. It looks like Maito's basically getting the advantage. And right at that point, Maito actually has a double go out and try and, and trying and causing problems, which Nobor Nobura finds. And we get that awesome fight between Nobura and Mahito, which is just Nobara, at fresh after watching Nanami beat the shit out of Haruta and learning what it means to be an actual grade one sorcerer, does her best to find the core of her cursed energy. And she uses this to use her resonance to actually attack Maito's soul directly, which not, can, which not too many sorcerers can actually say. She has a decent back and forth with all, be it all, be it all though, this weaker Mahito. She still has this awesome back and forth with him to the point where she's able to land a solid hit to where it's able to trip up the Mahito that's fighting Yuji to where Yuji can get the, Yuji can get the fucking, um, upper hand against the Mahito that he's going after, right? It is sincerely such an amazing portion of the Yuji versus Mahito fight that 110% without a debate as we're all talking about 
definitely goes into the S tier. And the reason why I saw someone say that the Yuji Toto versus Maito part is 10 times better than the Yuji Nobara part, I will have to agree on that. Trust me, that's why there is a higher tier above S. Don't get me wrong. We will get this all taken care of, guys. We will get this all taken care of really quickly. Moving on, which we'll actually get to that right now. Yuji and Tojo versus Maito, God tier. Yuji and Toto versus Maito is my honest to God favorite fight. That's why it's going to God tier. It's not going to go any lower. I will accept no other answers. Yuji and Toto vs. Maito is the greatest fight in the series, and you will not prove me wrong. Maito beating the shit out of Yuji to the and beating into his philosophy into him to the point where you are the same as me. You don't care about cursed spirits. You're a liar. You just want to do the best thing that's right. I just want to do the best thing that's right for me and kill sorcerers. Toto showing up to then give Yuji the best pep talk of his life and just overall start brawling with Maito and then that iconic clap of Toto clapping and Yuji showing up ready with a black flash waiting for Maito's fucking mitt is one of the greatest moments of all time. Yuji versus Maito is such a huge moment. It really is. The dynamic the mortal enemies having met up and having been built up throughout the entire series, finally having the final duke out. When Mahito uses his 0.2 domain expansion, when Yuji uses Black Flash to the point that it's almost considered he actually uses Black Flash at will. The clapping of the soul that Toto uses after he loses his curse technique and Yuji basically beating Mahito after he transforms into his birthday mode, the instant spirit body of distorted killing. It is the greatest fight in all of Jujutsu Kaisen. You cannot convince me different. Blast Baru makes a good point. This fight is going to be super hype in Season 2. It's going to be the best fight out of all of Season 2. Shishinana said birthday mode, lol. That's what I call it because Mido says, wish me a happy birthday. So he goes birthday mode. That's what I call it. I, I think it's cooler to say than the instant spirit body of distorted killing. Like a fucking 14-year-old edgy goth kid making their fucking uh, username on MySpace. It's a miracle Gege survived writing the fight. There was so much heat, agreed. He definitely needed to cool down after that. Uh, moving on, we have Yuji and Toto versus Hanami, which is a very fun fight. Um, I pretty much really enjoy it. It was a great way to pretty much almost cap off season, two, uh, season one. Um, Hanami was an awesome villain and really got to shine. I love the whole idea that Hanami was this natural spirit or more prone to being a natural spirit. So it really wasn't the best fighter. So it basically had to develop bloodlust throughout the fight while it was going on. And just Yuji and Toto's dynamic, my brother, you know, that's just iconic. When they fucking say brother and they fucking bounce off each other's feet, super cool. Um, when they t when Hanami creates that giant fucking tree spirit or forest like forest emer deep forest emergence like Hashirama like it's fucking like it's like sh they're in Naruto super cool super super cool um, I think it's an awesome fight one of the best pretty much the best way they could have capped off the um, the exchange event I definitely don't think Yuji and Toto um, versus Hanami is S tier, but I think that it's, it's very high A tier. I would not put it at the same level as Sukuna versus Maharaga, Maito versus Mechamaru. I just wouldn't. Um, a lot of you guys seem to disagree. S uh, Vex says S fight, the first Black Flash, Hanami enjoying the fight, Toto having that idol on his head, having an entire conversation about those things that suck your cursed energy. True. The my IQ is 530,000 and also Yuji landing and breaking Nanami's black flash record is an iconic moment. 
But the reason why I would say it's an A tier is because in the grand scheme of things, would I really ever watch or read this fight again? Like there are just so many better fights that have so much higher stakes than this one. It was funny, badass, and both thigh and both sides. Like I have a list, I'm sorry. Both sides growing stronger and stronger as hype. He didn't break the record, he met it. Well, either way. Sleeping Danger says I rewatched this fight a lot. All right, I'll give it to you. I'll give you S. I'll give it an S fight. I'll give it an S tier. You guys convinced me. Patriot makes a good point. This fight had high stakes when watching, though. The stakes only feel lower in hindsight. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. If just manga A, anime makes it S... Yep, you guys convinced me. Congratulations, your agenda succeeded. You guys were able to get me to push it into A tier. Congratulations. Up next, Yuji vs. Choso. And I really think that's, um, I really feel like that's no question. That also goes to God tier. Yuji vs. Choso is, again, one of the best fights in the entire series. It's just such an even brawl. Choso being the staple poster child of blood manipulation shows just how blood manipulation just shows just how blood manipulation is able to make you a close range fighter, a mid range fighter, a, a long range fighter. Just the way that Choso is able to just make blood manipulation look like such a strong ability compared to Kamo in this fight is insane. Yuji's resolve in this fight is actually crazy. Yuji, when he feels like he's gonna, we get that awesome callback to Fearsome Wound when he feels like, when Yuji feels like he might die in this fight, right before he starts to panic again, he, ha he hits his resolve. He hits his calm point and goes, no, I'm exactly where I need to be. This is my role. There's such a cool moment, right? And then he continues to the whole bathroom scene when he turns on the water thanks to Mechamaru and is able to stop Choso from abusing blood manipulation. And they're just going back and forth. When Yuji goes in the stall, locks it, and then kicks the stall door at fucking Choso, the animation is going to pop off for this fight. It's going to be one of the greatest fights in the entire series. Um... Yuji vs. Choso is definitely one of the best fights in the series. Um, I have to put it above Yuji and Toto vs. Hanami. Have to put it above Mahito vs. Makamaru. Have to put it above Gojo vs. Toji. It literally might be one of the best fights in the series, and it has to sit god tier. If not, the top of S. You know what? A lot of people are saying agreed with God tier, S tier. Everyone's saying God tier. We'll leave it God tier. We will leave it God tier right now. We won't change it. We won't change it. All right, guys. We're getting into pretty much the last half of the um, of the tier list. We have one row and four left. One, two, three, four. So we're pretty much getting to the end of this. Guys, thank you all so much if you've been hanging out with me for this entire tier list. It's been awesome. We've talked about literally almost every fight in the entire series. We've had so much to talk about. You guys donated so much money to me. That was insane. I, I sincerely appreciate every single one of you guys. I appreciate every single one of you guys that donated. It means the world to me. And I especially appreciate my best grade members for being the best um, in the world. I love every single one of you guys. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to take a quick break. I got to fill up my water. I got to take a quick pee. Um, guys, I'm going to put an ad out. If you don't get one, congratulations. You're lucky. I'll be right back and we'll finish this tier list, guys. We're going to finish this tier list. Lost Nadagio, thank you so much for watching me while on the clock. I love that even more. I'm going to play an ad. If you guys get it, good for you. If you don't, good for you even more. I love all of you guys. I'll be right back right after the bathroom break. Right back after the bathroom break, guys.
Your boy has returned. He's back. Persona music always slaps. You know the shits. Throughout the heaven and the earth, Toto alone is the honored one. <laughs> Orange said throughout the heaven and the earth, Noya alone is the misogynistic one. Yeah, I, I can't say that. Eric Berendent or Berendt, I would watch 10 ads for you. You're the best. I appreciate you. Libra365, how much did I miss? Oh, uh, you didn't miss a lot. Um, we're pretty much mostly done with the uh, tier list, but you can kind of see where we're at. Um, and also, we got a, a couple more fights to go through, so... Let's definitely just keep going through it, guys. Thank you all so much for being with me, sticking with me throughout this long tier list. We're almost coming up on three hours, guys. So seriously, I appreciate every single one of you guys being here. You guys are all awesome. Some of the best people I have the pleasure of knowing. So coming up next is going to be Yuji versus the Grasshopper Curse. So, Yuji versus the Grasshopper Curse, I mean, like, it's a fun fight, but I definitely don't consider it something that I ever look forward to reading again. Um, I think it shows that Yuji is able to actually take on um, a high-grade curse spirit like that and be able to outsmart them and beat them with pure power. Even Mei Mei kind of brings that up, that she's kind of impressed he was able to deal with that spirit. But, like, it's not a fight that I ever, once again, look forward to. I always forget about. Um, I don't even really consider it um, a worthwhile fight. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put it at a... I'm going to put it right where it belongs in D tier. Just pure D tier. Nothing special about it. Completely fucking, you know, just there to, sh to show that Yuji's grown since we last saw him. Orin says, I only reread read this when I want to reread Gojo vs. Disasters. I enjoy re reading it, but never seek it out. Exactly. Michael Lundy, smartest villain in the verse. True. Went too soon. The genius, the, the young genius went way too soon. Uh, next up, we have Yuji vs. Haba, um, which is Haba is Mr. 3000 late. Mr. Uh, way above us, way just in the future with his style and sense of just fashion. Uh, Mr. Fucking spinning wheel hat right there. Which I just have to say is definitely probably just another D tier fight. Um, because once again, it's mainly just a bully. Yuji literally just like dodges all of his attacks breaks his fucking skull with his fucking fist. Everyone's like, who? We got two who's at once. Rye guy and Libra said who? The helicopter hat guy. Exactly. We don't even remember who he is. No one even remembers him. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and say it's a pretty easy bet to say. Yuji literally collapsing someone's skull with his bare hand and then barely leaving with any damage behind it, I'd have to say is a, uh, is a D. Yeah, even the army struggled with my mans, which is, says a lot. I mean, maybe we should have saw that fight. That might have got him a little bit more clout, but. Uh, yeah, bro, so weak he got killed by the U.S. military. R.I.P. Uh, next up is Yuji vs. Hikari, and I'm very sad to say this honestly may end up being another D-tier fight because it goes by so quick, and it's not even really a fight. Yuji doesn't fight back the entire time. He just lets Hikari basically beat the shit out of him, break his fucking nose, and rearrange his face because he's trying to ally with Hikari. Um, it, it, I would probably put it at C if Yuji actually fought back, but... I really don't think it's necessary. Oh, Blast Borrow, thank you so much for the donation, the $5. That means a lot. Appreciate that. Did we rank Yuji versus Grasshopper Curse? We actually just finished ranking it a little while ago. It got D tier. Um, you didn't have to donate just to ask that, but I appreciate the donation. <laughs> Special grade potential. He can almost solo the army. Oh, stop, Sleeping Danger. Relax. 
Yeah, D tier, Yuji doing nothing. I completely agree. It's D tier because Yuji just doesn't even fight. Yuji should have wasted Hikari in hindsight. You're also in a firm believer that Yuji beats Hikari? Ah, oh, my goodness gracious. That's why I was arguing with Broken Ronin on his 50th, 50th anniversary fucking Honored Ones podcast because I don't believe that Yuji or Megami could beat Hikari, but whatever. That's just me. Tijinan base Hikari 100% interesting. Hikari base slams Yuji. That's kind of more my opinion, but you guys can think what you think. Um, I, this isn't a power scaling. This isn't a power scaling stream. This is more or less a, uh, a which fight is better stream. So let's try and keep it to that. Um, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you like the stream. Seriously, all of you guys just being here means a lot to me. Thank you to everyone. Thank you again, Blast Borrow, for donating. Y you're the best. You mean so much to me. Thank you so much. Um, seriously, thank you all so much, especially thanks to my best grade members just for supporting the channel. That's Yuji vs. Akari's going to D, and I think it's pretty obvious that Yuji vs. Higuruma definitely goes right up to S tier, right? We can all agree on that, right? Yuji vs. Higuruma is an S tier fight. Higuruma is an S tier character, so just any fight that he's in automatically immediately levels up to becoming um, a number one. No, oh, you guys can't really see the, um... Guys can't really see... Hold on, let me see if I can... Figure something out here. Oh, I can make this a little smaller. There we go. Now you can kind of see everything again. That, that brings everyone back into the fold. You can see the fights that we still have yet to rank. All right. But yeah, um, Yuji and Higuruma, it's one of the best fights in the Cullen game. Um, it really is an awesome battle. And just overall, Higuruma's character is what elevates the fight 10 times higher, right? Higuruma going through his midlife crisis, whatever you want to call it. Um, he, when we find him, he's basically bathing in his clothes because he's trying to do things that are out of the ordinary just to kind of break himself out of the depression he finds himself in. He's literally killed people at this point. Higuruma's dealing with the fact of what the Culling Games has brought him to do and what his awakened curse technique has really caused. Um, he kind of has went against all of the principles and morals that he set for himself in everyday life back in the day. So seeing someone like Yuji follow those principles even despite having someone like Sukuna inside of him that caused the death of thousands of people and Yuji still own that like he is responsible for it just breaks Higuruma it breaks the facade that Higuruma was putting on the entire time Higuruma was literally sh when he was shouting at Yuji after getting the death penalty how like you I, I'm I, I you have to there's nothing but blackness there's nothing but darkness in this world He's trying to convince himself of all that stuff. He's trying to convince himself of this new worldview that he's found himself on. Higuruma is able to keep up with Yuji, shape-shifting that hammer, which is a super cool way to fight. He's literally only been a sorcerer for like two weeks now, and he's literally just super powerful. His domain expansion is super cool. Um, overall, Higuruma... Higuruma is just super cool, in my honest opinion, and his fight with Yuji is awesome, and the fact that he literally could have killed Yuji, but chose not to because Yuji just changed his heart, was is just super... It's one of the small little victories we get in Jujutsu Kaisen. We don't get many of those, guys, you know? We have to be honest here, we don't get many of them. So the small ones we can take, we have to be willing to get. So definitely Yuji vs. Higuruma, I have to say, without a doubt, is an S-tier fight. 110%. Next up, Yuji vs. Junpei. So I instinctively would put this in D, but being honest here, Junpei and his death really does have a decent emotional impact on Yuji, and it helps Yuji grow for the foreseeable future. 
Yuji versus Junpei is definitely at least a C-tier fight, in my honest opinion. Uh, Junpei doesn't deserve this, right? Junpei goes through nothing but sadness, depression. Junpei's character arc is super sad. Super sad, and the fact that at the end of the day, even when Yuji was willing to accept him and accept him for all of his flaws, Maijiro comes in at the last second and takes him out? Are you kidding me? My jaw hit the floor when Junpei died. I could not see that coming. And it's also just cool to see an actual sorcerer fight, but sorcerer fight between two rookie sorcerers. Junpei with his moon dregs and Yuji just with his hands. <laughs> Like it's it is a super cool moment um, and definitely a decisive moment in the early Jujutsu Kaisen days. So while I would have to not put it at a B, I definitely would say it's a nice C tier fight for sure. First time I cried watching reading JJK for real. Yo, I didn't cry, but it definitely was the first time I had a major emotional impact from the show. Um, it definitely sold me on everything else that Gege was cooking up for me. That was the selling point of the fucking Jujutsu Kaisen series for me, was Maido taking out Junpei and erasing all of the potential character and just amazing development that Junpei got as a whole. The fake foreshadowing was criminal too, that Junpei was going to be a fucking sorcerer, a member of the trio or quadrupo, whatever the fuck they're called, under Gojo. They did us dirty. They did us dirty as fuck. They did us super dirty. Coming up next is Yuji versus Toto. And this is in the exchange event um, when Yuji and Toto find out that they are best friends. Toto basically beats the ever living shit out of Yuji at this at this moment here. Um, before Yuji actually begins to understand what Toto's saying and doing, and Toto wants to train Yuji, right? Um, in which case, Yuji starts to actually overwhelm Toto in just pure hand-to-hand -hand physical combat, right? Yuji is actually able to out martial arts Toto, this fucking giant beast of a fucking man, right? And then Toto introduces cursed energy to Yuji, and Yuji's able to develop from that cursed energy manipulation. Yuji levels up from this fight entirely, almost on the spot. Um, so Yuji versus Toto is a really cool fight, but it's also not even really a fight, right? We just see small glimpses of them throwing blows back and forth. Um, it doesn't have any stakes. It doesn't have any emotional moment behind it. Again, it's mainly just a fucking training little brawl. Um, so it's cool that we get, we do, uh, right? Um, CL says A tier just for how unhinged we find out how Toto can be. That is true. We do see Toto's dream, the origin of brother and besto friendo. I'd have to say top of C tier. Like, do we really think Yuji vs. Toto sits at the same tier as something like Megami unveiling Chimera Shadow Garden? Toji vs. Dagon, Gojo vs. Jogo, do we really think? Yuji vs. Toto, this nothing burger of a fight, sits at the same tier as those those fights. For comedy, yes. For realistic -y, for, for realistic, no. Top C is solid. I would have to give it, we'll give it a C for everything that it has. Um, we'll give it a C for everything that it has. I don't think it's top of C either. We'll just put it in C. How about that? Not actually in fighting though. Exactly. I think we all kind of agree that like that kind of sold you guys and I'm glad it did. Uh, we need a funniest moments tier list for JJK. True. That would be a really funny thing because like, JJK does have a lot of really cool comedy. All right. Up next is Yuji vs. Yuta, which in my opinion is an awesome little brawl. Um, seeing Yuta and Yuji, the two main characters of the story, go back and forth was a fight that I never thought we would really get. But I'm super glad that we did. Seeing Yuta, seeing Yuta appear after his long absence from the story, his long, his long trip to Africa, is just super cool. His entrance into the fucking series, when he just slams down on the ground and creates that giant creator, ju that giant crater, literally keeps up with Yuji's speed, which we've known is, is absolutely insane, right? Yuji's speed is known to be just fucking insane. So Yuta's able to keep up with him while holding a sword and go back and forth hand to hand with Yuji. While although Yuji does 
uh, does break Yuta's sword. Um, he does get that combat knife, and Yuji does seem to be a little bit more versatile and willing to get down and dirty than Yuta is. Yuta is an awesome fighter. We see that in Sendai Colony. You know, we see that in pretty much all of his fights going forward. So Yuta is a powerhouse. And Yuji was able to keep up with that at least for a little bit, at least until Rika showed up. And once Rika showed up, that was terrifying, right? Rika grabs Yuji's head like it's ready to like she's ready to break his neck and goes, Oh, are we playing? Like, no, we're just playing. And then Yuta does the badass thing and kills Yuji, but keeps him alive with reverse curse technique to fulfill his binding vow. Super cool. Um, I definitely think Yuji vs. Yuta is an A-tier fight despite being so quick. If it was a little bit longer, it probably would have made it up to S-tier. But Yuji vs. Yuta is definitely an awesome fight. It definitely breaks, breaks past all the B-tier fights, in my honest opinion. And it's just fun enough to make it up to the fights with Shoso vs. Noya and all that stuff. Koi said uh, you wouldn't put it in A, you'd put it in B. B because it's just a really short brawl, Libra says, so it's in B with the others. Too much credit, the hype makes it too great. Hmm, a lot of you guys are saying you disagree. Forgettable for me, Orange says, but I get why people really like it. Noya vs. Choso is a better fight. I feel like Noya vs. Choso and Yuji vs. Yuta are, are equally as enjoyable. Like low, like a low mid tier A, everyone tripping. I definitely feel like it sits at a very low A. I'm not saying it's the greatest fight since sliced bread, but I feel like A tier is decent. I think A is fair. You guys gotta give me this much at least. Unoriginal and unfunny is here. Beast, I say, well, if unoriginal and unfunny says it, that has to be the case. I have to listen. Thanks for being here, brother. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all of you guys being here. I honestly uh, love all of you guys. If you haven't already, please like the stream. Next up is Yuta and Toge vs. Curse Spirit, the Zumba Curse Spirit. <laughs> the little elephant thing that summons the rays of light. Cool fight. I don't think it uh, it literally brings the same level of like ent entertainment as like a Gojo vs. Jogo or Toji vs. Geto would be. Um, while I think it's a pretty fun fight, um, it shows Toge Inumaki in his element, breaking shit with his cursed speech, and it also shows Yuta kind of developing his cursed energy output and also just gaining confidence, which I think is really cool. So I think it, it, it definitely is a little bit... D tier. Sorry. It's just not cool enough to be C tier. It's just not cool enough to be C tier. It's got to be D tier. Overall, in the grand scheme of fights, it's not even really a fight. It's a small little fight against, um, you know, against a fodder curse spirit um, that's meant to show y Yuta's growth. I really feel like this fight doesn't really hold much weight whatsoever. I would I would much rather watch Maki versus Mai, you know, than than this fight, in my honest opinion. D tier doesn't have to be bullying. D tier just has to be un un you know unfun fights. I would watch Yuji vs Junpei, Yuji vs Toto, Nobara vs Momo. I think these are all fights that are above Yuji Yuta and Toge vs the Spirit. I'm putting it in D tier. I think it's pretty just uneventful. I wouldn't even really consider it a real fight. Um, it's just a fight against something that you can farm. It's like a when you're it's like a random battle in an RPG little mini boss koi nobara versus momo definitely better bam we got it shichi nana said d tier equals no reason to watch again that's one reason to look at it uh, uh, uh orange said no nobara versus momo is too low momo makes it god tier no cap we gotta stop momo is awesome but i i, I actually i love the agenda never stop never change orange up next, we do have an amazing battle coming up. One of the greatest battles. Um, the battle that started it all. Um, Dienobot, thanks for being here. Spicy Nuggies, I was just getting hungry. Thank God. I'm glad you're here. Um, Chosu, Choso vs. Yuji is top god tier, baby. God tier. I'm going to post the tier list on a community uh, when we're done. You'll all see. 
Yuta vs. Ghetto. Yuta vs. Ghetto, the fight that started it all, really is a great fight, in my honest opinion. A very easy S-tier fight. Oops, sorry if you guys heard that. Didn't mean to knock your socks off. Bro, when Kenny said Ghetto would have won if he didn't split his curses up, my heart broke. I was so proud of Yuta. Uh, uh. Definitely an S-tier fight. Just overall, Yuta's growth throughout the Ghetto fight is awesome. Think about this. Yuta literally stumbles upon all of his friends dead. Or what he thinks is dead. They're all pretty much fucked up. And Ghetto, the special grade sorcerer, this evil villain who is literally probably right now the most evil villain in the verse at the moment. Besides Kenjaku going off doing whatever he's doing. Yuta fights this person and wins on his first sorcerer fight as a whole. Just overall in the beginning of the fight, Yuta steps in. He's able to take on all of the fodder curse spirits Ghetto summons. Yuta shows us his copy curse technique which shows curse speech at a much higher output than inumaki could ever hope to achieve um the die such an iconic fucking panel right um right after that we see yuta and rico tag team ghetto fighting with fighting with playful cloud which kudos to ghetto being able to literally fight two on one with fucking get uh, with Rika, a special grade curse spirit, and Yuta, a special grade sorcerer, with using only one weapon, you gotta give Geto his props. He really stood his ground for not really using as many curse spirits as he possibly could. As we see with Kenjaku's fight, curse spirit manipulation, he could just be throwing curse spirits out all day, every day, and that makes him terrifying. So Yuta really did go up against a Geto that suffers from his ability just not being thought out enough by Gege. But overall, the buildup to the final blow of Yuta using pure love and Geto summoning all of his curse spirits into one giant Uzumaki and that last special grade he has. The fight just overall makes Volume Zero worth reading. It's an, it's an always enjoyable fight that you can never get enough of. It really is just an awesome, awesome, awesome fight. I definitely feel like if Yuji vs. Choso is going to be god tier, then we got to give y Yuta vs. Geto a god tier fight as well. You can watch Yuta vs. Geto 30,000 times and it'll still be just as hype. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad that they gave Yuta his Black Flash in the movie. So glad we gave Yuta his Black Flash in the movie. I think Yuta vs. Ghetto is better than Gojo vs. Disaster Curses. I think it's better than Gojo vs. Toji. I think it's better than Kenjaku. I think it's better than all of these guys. Tiberius is back. Can't wait to see Yuta's next fight in the manga. Me neither. Janobot says Yuta vs. Ghetto is the climax of the movie. So yeah, it is the climax of the movie. All right. Up next is Yuta vs. Kurarushi. Yuta vs. The Cockroach. Now, that is a pretty decent brawl, don't get me wrong. Kurarushi does bring out some stops, and the fact that Yuta ends the entire brawl. Um, Yuta literally ends the entire brawl by kissing this cockroach on the lips and pushing out its fucking, pushing out his reverse curse technique to make it explode. Iconic moment. The Festering Life Sword is a really cool curse tool that, the Kur that Kurarushi uses. Um, the fact that it creates parasites that just summon out of Yuta's body is crazy. And Yuta just trying his best. Yuta basically nerfing himself at this point, right? He's handicapping himself because he doesn't want to show his reverse curse technique. He doesn't want to show Rika. He doesn't want to show too many of his own abilities when fighting this special grade curse spirit, who I would say is disaster curse spirit level. So it's definitely a really cool fight. While I definitely don't think it's as enjoyable as some of these other fights, I definitely think it's a really cool moment for Yuta. Um, so I would definitely say that it definitely sits at like a good B tier, top of B tier fight. 
Yuta vs Sendai Colony is an amazing battle. I think Yuta vs Uro and Ishigori is a much cooler fight. That probably sits in S tier for me, but I feel like Yuta vs Kurarushi is probably a little bit lacking. Not as fun as Maki vs Noya. Not as fun as Kenjaku vs Choso or or you know Kenjaku vs Yuji Yuki or Megami vs Reggie, but still a great fight, similar to Gojo vs to Jogo or Toji vs Geto. Just an overpowered character fighting a character that lets them really show the best that they can do before fighting characters that give them the real run for their money. Which is kind of what we're going into right now um, of giving characters runs for their money, um, because right now we go right into the final greatest fight of Sendai Colony, which is Yuta vs Ryu and Uro, which we're going to have to give the top of S tier. One of the best fights in the Culling game, one of the best fights in Jujutsu Kaisen in general. I don't think it's a god tier fight. Um, I think it's very similar level to all of the fights that are on the same S tier level. Um, but Yuta really does it up in this last in, the, in this last um, part of Sendai Colony the triple domain expansion. Just the fact that he's able to go blow for blow with Uro, someone whose sky manipulation is an awesome technique and really a counter against a lot of hand-to-hand -hand fighters. Yuta then sees Ishigori. Ishigori with the strongest cursed energy output in all of history, firing these awesome crazy beams from his fucking pompadour. Just absolutely insane. Yuta's running through the streets, dodging these beams. He goes up and fights and throws hands with Ishigori. Then he's just, then he summons Rika and summoning Rika, we get his true copy curse technique. We see him go up against Oro with his curse copy techniques. Rika's fighting a, spe a, a potential special grade sorcerer in Ishigori, or at least a very high grade one Ishigori by herself. Super crazy. The triple domain expansion is something you can't get past. The domain lock and clash. It's just overall everything in this fight is one of the it's one of the craziest fights in Jujutsu Kaisen. So much happens in this fight and we see so much. It goes on for almost eight chapters and there literally is eight chapters worth of just amazing fights. Just everything in it everything in it are you are we being talked into god tier i'm only willing to do five god tiers guys there can only be five god tiers so if this is if this makes it into god tier it's our last one but i think i'm also kind of talking myself into god tier too it's just such a good fight Unoriginal and Unfunny says, second favorite for me, legit, if it just had a greater emotional impact, it would beat my number one. Yeah, we're going to give it God tier. We're going to move it up to God tier. We're going to move it up to God tier. I think Kashimo and Akari and Yuti, Yuji versus Mahito are better fights. But it really is another level. Yuta and Sendai Colony is 100% a much better fight than almost every other fight in Jujutsu Kaisen. So these might be our top five fights right here. These might be our top five fights right here. I, I have to agree. I mean, that fight, it really is a step above everything else. You guys talked me into it. I completely agree. All right, guys. So. Might be blasphemous, but I come to Sendai Colony fights more than the Yuji vs. Maito fight on rereads. I'm not even going to say anything. I think Yuji vs. Maito is better. We'll leave it at that. Up next is Gojo vs. Clones. Gojo vs. the Clones curse user. The cl curse user that put the bag over his head. Interesting to see him use Limitless in a much weaker way than we're used to, right? I think it's really cool to see Teenage Gojo um, basically use the six eyes, evaluate that entire situation. I think it's also cool to see him use Blue in a way that is able to effectively demolish the clones, 
one thing I will give the curse user with the bag over his head is he did have a really cool curse technique. Even Gojo says so, right? Gojo says your curse technique's pretty strong. Sucks that I'm just stronger than you. So we gotta give that curse user his just dues and say that his curse technique was pretty cool. Um, and also, in my opinion, that last little bit at the end where Gojo tries to use red, it doesn't work, but then he just punches him instead. Super funny, hilarious, in my opinion. So I think with everything that comes with that fight, we can definitely up it to C tier compared to the other fights that are in uh, D tier. Specifically because of the curse user's curse technique being super cool and us seeing Teen Gojo and everything that he can do. Um, I think that's super cool, and I think that makes it above the D tier fights, in my opinion. Makes it a more enjoyable read. And also, like I said, Curse User just had a really cool um, curse technique. Ghetto versus his Curse User, though, definitely D tier. That's a bullying moment right there. That Ghetto literally just demolishes this guy to the point he had no chance. This guy summons two Shikigami. Ghetto literally summons an Earthworm worm Curse. The guy tries to come in on the other side and get those like, yeah, I pretty much planned that you would do that. And literally just fucking snaps this boy's neck. Breaks this boy. Snapping necks and cashing checks. Super fucking cool. Ghetto just makes easy work of this guy. Beats him up so hard he has a flashback of his childhood dog. Crazy. Easy D tier. Just goes right to the D tier. That's all she wrote. Uh, up next is Yuji versus Sukuna, which this is a uh, non-vessel Yuji versus Meguna, which in my opinion was a great little moment. Um, I don't know how great it fares as far as overall fights, but I do think Yuji pushing through all of those cleaves and dismantles was just iconic. An iconic moment. You really can't beat that. Um... Him trying his best and just throwing all of these different debris and doing everything to the point where Sukuna even has to acknowledge that Yuji's power is absolutely godly at this level. Just demon god level. It's super cool. The cleave moment is really what pushes this above all else. But as a fight in general, I would say top of C. It's not really a fight. It's a quick little scuffle before Maki comes in. That's where we pick things up in the in the Yuji and, and Maki versus Meguna in B tier. But the Yuji versus Sukuna part in the beginning is great, iconic, but it's a one chapter fight before Maki shows up. We got to be realistic here. Everyone that's saying B tier, A tier, it's we got to be realistic. It's a one chapter fight. Nothing really that great about it besides Yuji stepping up to Sukuna, which is really what puts it in C tier to begin with, to be honest with you. Otherwise, it would basically just get overshadowed by Maki and Yuji versus Meguna, that tag team. The Cleave Flurry panel, as Quinton does mention, is one of the most goop bump inducing moments, so I have to agree. It definitely is a really great moment in time, and that, that panel is iconic. But, stop a C tier. Next up is Panda and Toge vs. Ghetto, which in the manga isn't even really a fight. Um, it's a quick couple panels where they try to outsmart Ghetto. Idumaki lands a pretty decent strike on, um, on Ghetto. And then Ghetto revives and just demolishes those two. The movie definitely upped the quality of the fight a lot more, um, where Panda definitely gets a couple more back and forth fights, uh, back and forth squabbles with Ghetto. Um, and he goes into gorilla mode even, um, which kudos to the movie for adding that to the fight because it definitely makes the fight a little bit better. Um, but I definitely would have to agree with you guys where it's kind of just a nothing burger of a fight. It happens, it's gone, it's over. Ghetto clearly overrides both of these characters in power level, strength, literally everything. So I agree with you guys. It definitely has to go in the D tier. The movie's improvements do not save that fight. D tier fight. Um, honestly, we can kind of just blitz through these last three fights really quickly because we have been doing this for over three and a half hours. 
Um, so we can get this done really quickly. I know I said I would explain every fight and I have been, don't get me wrong, but these last three fights are just easy to place and easy to run through. Sukuna versus the Finger Bearer is an awesome fight where we can see three finger Sukuna just embarrass. I think even at this point, it's a two finger Sukuna, right? We see a two finger Sukuna just outright embarrass Finger Finger. Just literally just laugh at him as he just cleaves him, destroys his body parts, cuts him into pieces, just embarrasses him completely and treats him like he's a child. He says, oh, special grade, you and me, right? You and me, man, we're both special grades. We get the Malevolent Shrine reveal, everything like that. I definitely feel like if it was a little bit longer, we could put it in a same similar tier as Gojo vs. Jogo or Toji vs. Ghetto, but it's going to have to remain in C tier for sure. Going to have to remain in C tier because it's a cool beatdown, really fun, but there's really nothing much to it. Blast Baru says, my girlfriend thinks the finger bearer looks really goofy. She would be right. The finger bearer does look really goofy, um, especially in that moment where Sakuna clowns the fuck out of him. Up next is Yuji versus Mahito um, before Nanami steps in in the versus Mahito arc. And I'd have to say that while it is an awesome moment for Itadori, we see Itadori's rage build up and we see him basically find out that he's the counter to Mahito's soul overriding, right? Which is an awesome moment. We love that Yuji and Mahito are basically natural born enemies. It's a really defining moment for both of their characters. Um, and the fact that Mahito is still able to overcome Yuji despite all of that rage, despite all of that power he has flowing through him at that moment is really cool. It's a cool fight, but I have to put it at pretty much the same level as I have Yuji and Nanami versus Mahito. Um, just overall, in the grand scheme of things, that fight doesn't really equate to the other, other fights that we get in the series, but it's emotional impact and development it has for both Yuji and uh, Mahito. Keep it at that B level because it is not a great ending for the core uh, of the anime. Great. And then up next, we have Eno versus Grandma, which honestly, we can just put right next to Eno versus Toji in D tier. We get to see Eno's curse technique and what it actually is. Grandma summons Toji, and then we get right into Eno versus Toji, where Toji beats the fuck out of Eno, and Eno dies. And then Toji beats Grandma, too. So uh, that fight gets put in D tier. Pretty much. And that's it, guys. That's literally everything. We did it. We got to the end of the fight tier list. We literally ranked and also explained every single fight in Jujutsu Kaisen, at least so far. It only took three and a half hours, but we got to it. So guys, I, I want to hear, I want to hear it. If you're a member, drop those Sakuna emojis in chat, those Sakuna smile emojis. Let me see them. We got all the way to the end of this tier list. I'm super proud of this, guys. Thank you guys all so much for being here. You guys are all awesome. Everyone like the stream if you haven't already. This was an awesome stream. Love you guys so much. And I think it's pretty fair to say that the top five fights of Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuji and Toto vs. Mahito, Kashimo vs. Akari, Yuta vs. Ryu and Oro, Yuta vs. Geto, and Yuji vs. Choso. The five best fights in the entire Jujutsu Kaisen series. Super awesome. All the S tier fights are well worth it. I feel like we don't really need to touch them. Gojo vs. Disaster Curses, Gojo vs. Toji, Maido vs. Mechamaro, Sakuna vs. Maharaga, Yuji vs. Higuruma. All awesome fights. Um, and I think sit at really great moments in S tier. A tier, all great fights as well. Vex, which some one of the everyone asking which one of the top five is my favorite. Yuji and Toto vs. Mahito is my favorite. 110% for sure. Yuji vs. Yuji vs. Mahito will always be my favorite. Um, guys, seriously, thank you all so much for coming and joining me. If you donated to the stream, it means so much to me. Thank you guys so much. You guys stun locked me for a minute with all those donations. Um, if you're a member, thank you so much for being a member. You guys are awesome. You support the channel in ways that you can't even explain. 
Um, guys, you all mean the most to me. I hope you guys all have an amazing weekend. Thank you all so much for uh, joining me on this awesome journey, this three and a half hour journey. Um, tomorrow, I will be posting a compilation video of my Toji, Sukuna, and Gojo fights. And then also sometime later in the week, I will be posting my Bleach Zanpakuto ranked video that is over an hour and a half long. That video was fucking a lot to make. Longest video I've ever made. I hope you guys all enjoy the videos that are coming out. Again, the video coming out tomorrow is just a compilation video. So if you've already seen the videos, I'm sorry. But just understand, I want to get that out for some new guys. Uh, so guys, thank you all so much for watching me. You guys make this so much fun. I enjoy doing this. You guys seriously make this the most fun job in the world, and I wouldn't trade anything for anything. So guys, seriously, I love all of you. I hope you guys all have a great rest of the weekend, and I'll see you guys all next time. Peace, okay?